stand. We have a rocket runner here tonight. Abby's down there in the corner. Abby waved to everybody. Wave, wave up there. If you want, Abby will run to the concession stand, take your order, pick it up, and actually deliver the food to you so you don't even have to leave your seat. So if you want Abby, she's got her little costume on. Wave her down. She'll pick up your food for you and bring it right back to you. Thank you, Abby. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H, The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. It's week 11 of the high school football season. That means it's playoff time. We are at Burn Union as the Fairfield Christian Academy Knights will host the Scioteville East Tartans. I'm Jared Stewart alongside Tim Shoemaker and our third member of our crew, Marion Royster, will be down on the field tonight. Tim, let's jump right into it with our pregame show brought to you by Personal Touch Party Rentals. Carol and Eric Whittington would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and events in Lancaster. They're a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio area since 2003. They would love to help you plan your next event, weddings, special events, even corporate events, all with the personal touch. They can be reached at 740-689-6991. The East Tartans come in at 4-5. Fairfield Christian, 8-2. and two. However, this is a 13-versus-4 matchup, but, I mean, I know games aren't played on paper, but if you look at this game on paper, this should be a really good football game. It's going to be a battle of teams that want to do something a little different. Uh, the Tartans, they want to manufacture drives, yeah. keep the ball. They're a great rushing team. We run for over 3,500 yards wow. this year. That's over 350 a game. You do the math there with 10 games. The thing is, they've only thrown the ball 35 times. Wow. So they're one-dimensional, but they're very good one-dimensional. On the other hand, Fairfield Christian, they like to be very balanced. They, they have their, their quarterback is thrown for over 1,000 yards. Danny Blair's run for over 1,200. They, and they're a big play team. They like to get the ball and score evidence by, if you look at the scores yeah. and through their schedule, they scored 61 points in a game this year. 
Let's bring in Marion uh, as we talk more about this matchup and, of course, the facilities. Uh, this game was moved uh, down here to Burn Union from Millersport, which is where Fairfield Christian played uh, all of their home games this year. And th- How can you go any further without talking about the beautiful upgrades that they did here at Burn Union, Marion? It's just fa- fabulous. Yeah, it, you took the words right out of my, my mouth, Jared. It's absolutely gorgeous out here. Kind of see the improvements that have been made. Um, you know, the, the field surface is really, really nice. Uh, got all the rain out of the way early, so it should be pretty clear uh, for the players this evening. But again, just a gorgeous night for football. Couldn't ask for better weather, especially in week 11 of the season. Let's break down uh, the matchups here. The, these two teams do have three common opponents. Uh, they both played green. Fairfield Christian beat them 42 to nothing. East beat them 39 to nothing. They both played Bishop Rosecrans. Fairfield Christian beat them 61-58. East beat them 42 uh, 42 to 30. They both played Miller. Fairfield Christian beat them 28-21. East lost 27-20. So the three uh, common opponents very very close in, in outcomes. Yeah, well, it's like all games are talk about Jared it's going to come down to number one who controls the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football and number two can you eliminate self-inflicting penalties and turnovers I think the when you look at their their competition you already mentioned you know Scioteville East had some uh, pretty tough competition. Look at the combined records of the teams that Fairfield Christian beat. They're 24 and 56. The combined records of the teams they lost to, 15 and 5. Those are some good teams they lost to. For East, the combined records of the teams they beat, only 10 and 35. But listen to the teams they lost to, 35 and 14. Yeah, you know, when you look at Fairfield Christian, they lost to Martins Ferry, who is a bigger school, yeah. but 5 and 5 and had some success against the Cardinal Division this year. They played three of the teams in the Cardinal Division. But they also played Danville early in the season, which is 10-0 and number one in their region. Yep. Got some other teams in action tonight in playoffs around the area. Of course, we're going to be following and checking in on scores from Bloom Carroll, who is hosting Athens. That uh, in region, uh, that one's in region 11 of Division 3. Also, Division 1 region, uh, that's, I'm sorry, that's region 11 of Division 3. In region uh, 3 of Division 1, Lancaster is on the road tonight taking on Westerville North, so we're going to be checking scores of those, right, as well as some other teams, just uh, interesting yeah, matchups. Already. And we'll also be checking on uh, scores for games that may impact who, if FCA wins, they would be moving on to play. So lots of games of interest tonight. We're also going to get you those uh, schedules for both these teams uh, that we talked about uh, who they've played. But this, uh, like I said, this is a game that uh, you know, usually you see a 13 versus 4, especially in the expanded playoffs, and you think, yeah, that's going to be a blowout. But I just I, I really think that this is going to be a tough matchup. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I think it's going to come down to Sayotteville to be able to control not giving up big plays because Fairfield Christian is very, very explosive yeah. offensively. We've seen that before this year. It'll be Fairfield Christian to kick it off. The kickoff is brought to you by Sheridan Funeral Home. Sheridan Funeral Home is proud to be supporting high school football. They have been serving the communities of Lancaster and Fairfield County for over 100 years. To kick it away for the Knights will be Rusty Hutchison. And back deep for Sayotteville East, the Tartans. Will be Norris McKinley, and it's going to be taken on the near sideline. A foot was out of bounds. Keegan Barker caught it, and East will take over right about the 29-yard line. To get to our keys to the game, brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service, parts, and reliability since 1979. Owner Mark North will provide you with a free written warranty on each estimate. That's Mark North of North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. Well, we've kind of hit on a lot of those points, but when you look at the averages offensively and defensively, Jared, they're, they're very similar. Yeah. And it's going to come down to somebody who gets a defensive stop or has a big defensive play will also be very beneficial to their success tonight. Quarterback Caden Houston hands it off right side to Dylan Fitzgerald, I believe, was the carrier that time. And he'll pick up on first down. He gets about seven yards. That's a good carry for first down. Well, you look at, they have a three-headed monster in their backs. You know, you have Norris McKinley with over 1,300 yards, Dylan Fitzgerald with almost 900, and Cam Justice just over 900. That is a very powerful running game. Coming near side, a first down carry and more. He might be gone. That is Norris McKinley. McKinley to the 10-5. Touchdown Tartans on the second play of the game. Norris McKinley, the 5'9", 160-pound senior. 
You mentioned him already, the, the amount of yards he ran for. and he's, he's not a very big guy, but he's got some speed, and he showed it right there. Now, 64 yards, made it look easy, Jared. You know, last week against Portsmouth Notre Dame, he had 323 yards and five TDs. Yeah. And, Mario, on this uh, night's defense is one that, you know, we, we mentioned the scores. They've given up a lot of points this year. I mean, it, it's fortunate for them they score a lot, but they've given up a lot as well. Yeah, they really have, Jared. You know, it's kind of one of those things they, they, I know Coach has been talking about. They want to play more consistently, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. You know, as we see, uh, Sayadaville take it in for the two-point conversion. But, you know, that's, that's one thing they're really going to have to really buckle down with, particularly with the size disadvantage. As I'm down here on the field, there is a stark size disadvantage for uh, Fairfield Christian on the field. You know, they really are going to have to find some way to manufacture some defense, get some stops, particularly since Sayota is so good with the run. Yeah, we saw it right there on the Dagger Law replay. That that size really came into uh, into factor right there with the offensive line. They just opened up a hole, and once McKinley got beyond those defensive backs for Fairfield Christian, there was no catching him. Quick start. That's what you want. Beautiful night here at Burn Union High School for this first round matchup. As we look out over this brand new turf, we see a full moon just ahead, uh, hanging right over the 50 yard line. It's just a gorgeous night. And uh, our crew, our Interface Video Productions crew, got down here early and they were able to uh, get some cool shots uh, with the drone. I'm sure we're going to be showing you. And got a chance to talk to athletic director Danny Snively right before we went on the air and they've got uh, they've got a lot of stuff really positive things going on down here with the new building getting ready to open up they're going to be building a new baseball field because they had to tear down the old baseball field and a field house going in and I tell you the the, the students of this community uh, really have a lot to benefit from in the coming years a lot of plans also to even continue to make it even better look at that view yeah, from our beautiful. drone unbelievable so congratulations to the uh, Sugar Grove Burn Union community. And Danny Snively's put in a ton of work since he's been down here as the athletic director, and he deserves a lot of credit as well as the school board. And this just looks uh, phenomenal. So East on the board first. They'll be kicking it away. Going to be a little short squibber. Be taken at the 40-yard line by one of the up men coming across the middle of the field. He's still on his feet near the 50-yard line. That's number two for the Knights, and that is Rusty Hutchison. Yeah, Rusty's a weapon. You know, he, he's a great kick returner in the punt and kickoff game. He's a good receiver. Um, I know that's one of the concerns uh, that Coach Bailey talked about, just their speed overall. Rusty was our player of the game in the, uh, the FCA and Fisher Catholic game. He had a fantastic game receiving-wise and as well, defensively as well. Interestingly enough, he averages 30 yards a catch on the receiving wow. end. It's pretty Impressive. interesting. Knights will go out of the shotgun. Gabe Welsh is the quarterback, and we have a flag immediately, and it's going to be offsides on the Tartans. <clears throat> Dead ball, encroachment number 12 on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Offsides against the defense. So the Knights will have first and five. Danny Blair in the backfield beside Gabe Welsh. Can't go without uh, talking about Danny Blair. This kid's just had a fantastic season, both offensively and defensively, and just a junior. Welsh looking to pass and just overthrows his intended receiver, who was Nate Hampton. Pass intended for Hampton, falls incomplete. Brings up a second and five for the Knights. Hey guys, it looked like Welsh had both guys open on that on, on those routes, those those slant and in routes, and uh, split the difference between the two of them. Had he picked either one and been able to put it on either one, he probably would have had a first down. Yeah, the deeper guy actually almost was able to haul it in. Yep. Second and five, Blair stands to the left of Welsh. He's got twin receivers to both sides. TJ Blair in motion. He'll take the handoff in front of brother Danny Blair blocking for him, and I think he's got close to a first down, depends on the spot, and where he went out of bounds. On the carry for the Knights, Blair. They might, looks like they're marking him about a yard short. Pernell out of bounds. <laughs> so third down and one. Third down and one. For Fairfield Christian. They do not huddle, they just go up to the line and look over to Coach Pardon for the play. We'll see what they do here third and one. <laughs> the 
Welsh will pitch it out to Blair. Blair trying to get to the outside. He's got the first down. Blair across the 35, 30. Blair's still on his feet, and he's brought down at the 20-yard line. Great run by Danny Blair for a first down for the Knights. Yeah, I like getting the ball to him real quick right there. Well, he's just out in space, yeah. and he's difficult to handle with his speed. And there is a flag down. Personal foul. Space mask. Number eight on the defense. 15-yard penalty. It'll be a first down. Yeah, we see the replay right here. I, I just I just love getting getting playmakers the ball early, yeah. Jared. I'm, I'm real big with that. I'm sure, Marion, uh, from a running back standpoint, you like that as well. I mean, getting it early so you can feel your way through and see where you want to go. Absolutely. Uh, on You know, particularly in high school, you get those quick tosses to get on the perimeter quickly, get in space, able to use some speed and have some greed out in front of you. Can't ask for anything more. Face mask penalty moves FCA inside the 10-yard line, just inside the 10, and they're going backwards right here as Welsh is going to be sacked back across the 15-yard line on the sack Justice for Sciotaville is Dustin Bailey. Loss of the play brings up second down and goal. Now it's second down and goal from the 17-yard line. Cameron Justice on the tackle. He's been one of the mainstays defensively for them out of his linebacker position. Welsh gives it to Blair left side, and Blair is wrapped up immediately by Dylan Fitzgerald. Well, let me say something about Cam. I know Coach Bailey talked about Cam. He was a linebacker. In midseason, they decided they had to make some adjustments. And he's not that big, Jared, but they put him on the defensive line, and he said he's made a huge difference in our defense as we've gotten better. I tell you, look at 77 there. He, he kicks off for them. You know, we've already talked about the size difference. Hayden Conkle is a junior, six foot three, three twenty-five. Definitely a mismatch on that line. Yeah, I don't want the grocery bill. <laughs> Third down and goal. Here's a pass into the end zone. Touchdown, Knights. Wide open for the Knights was Rusty Hutchison and a beautiful pass from Gabe Welsh. Yeah, great throw. Check the Dagger Law replay here on this one. They were backed up third and goal from behind the 20. And this beautiful pass from Welsh to Hutchison puts them on the board. Yeah, nobody within five yards. Knights now will, I believe, go for two to try to match Sciotaville, who went for two as well. Well, here's the thing. Rusty Hutchison's 37 for 43 on extra points. So you chase that point now. And they're going to be moved a little closer. Cam Justice jumped off sides. Dead ball, encroachment, the interior of the line, ball on the defense. the defense, still try down. Ball's place half the distance to the goal line. So we'll see if the Knights can convert here on the two-point conversion to tie it up. Welsh pitches it out to Blair. Blair quickly yeah. to the far side, and he's not going to get in. Wow, what a job by yes. Norris McKinley. I thought it was going to be easy tiptoe in. It looked like it. They strung him out. Well, they had four wide, so what they're doing is they're trying to block less people. But you watch here on the replay, they just kept stretching it out, Jared. I mean, Danny kicked it into gear, and I thought right there yeah. he's, he might cut inside and take yeah. it. Yeah, he had that opportunity right there. A real good job by McKinley yes. to stop him short. But I don't think we're going to have to worry about that being the only point. <laughs> no. You know, I the way it looks right. right now. I mean, we've played three minutes and 13 seconds, and there's already been two <laughs> touchdowns. Let's take a look at the, uh, the the schedules for these two teams, how they got here to week number 11. Of course, we, we know about uh, FCA. They are out of the uh, Mid-State League Cardinal, but here's Sciotaville East. Yeah, you kind of go down through there, and, like, a, you, you know, you recognize that they already played two teams in, in the uh, Mid-State, in Bishop Rosecrans and Miller, but you look down through there, and, you know, you see improvement. Even though they gave up uh, some points, Beaver Eastern's the number two seed in the region. Um, they played some good teams, and, you know, I you know once you get to the playoffs, Jerry, everybody's 0-0. Oh no. Well, and last week against Portsmouth, Portsmouth Notre Dame, had a, a chance team. to win. Yeah, they're and they're a good team. And you see, and you see the night schedule. They really finished strong with four yeah. straight wins in the league. And the one probably that I bet Coach Pardon would say they grew the most on was that Rosecrans game where it was 61-58 uh, three weeks ago. 
just a really uh, a big shootout, but they ended up pulling that one out. I think they probably grew the most out of that one. You look at those last two games, they were blowouts. Exactly, and their defense played better the last, the last two games, and I know he's been looking for more consistency in that area. McKinley on the return takes it out to the 25. That's where the Tartans will take take control, leading 8-6 with 8.41 to play in the first quarter. The Tartans coached by Adam Bailey. You had a chance to talk to him this week, and he is also the AD. He does uh, a lot of teaching in the classroom. He's just a busy man and took time out of his uh, his week to talk to you. Yeah, really so enjoy him for that. getting an opportunity to meet some of the people and, and that are doing a good job and, and, and coaching and or whatever area they're in in education. It's uh, truly a positive thing that's going on, Jared. This is Adam's fourth season as the coach of Scioteville. They finished uh, third of seven teams in the SOC, the Southern Ohio League, or the Southern Ohio Conference, I guess it would be. Big run here for a first down and more. And that is Dylan Fitzgerald, the five foot nine, two hundred twenty-seven pound senior running back. Yeah, I like. So how they go he from runs. McKinley, who's a little smaller and quicker. And then he's got power with Dylan Fitzgerald. Yeah, and they slanted him left off the line here, and he just, he's just going to run through tackles, Jared. You can see. Watch the replay here. See, there's going to be some initial contact right there. Oh, he, that's not going to get it done. Not at all. And it took three to four tackles yeah. to get him down. Here's McKinley up near the fifty. Another pickup of about seven on the play. Now, here's the thing. You know, we, we talked about it earlier. They want to have draws. They're going to run the football. Yep. There, there's no mistakes. I mean, no, you know, we're no mistakenly what they're trying to do. They only threw four passes last week. Like I said, they're going to run the football. Now, they want to do that better than you defend them. And if he can keep the ball away from Fairfield Christian, that's a big advantage to their team. Houston with Fitzgerald to his right. And this time he gives it off. I believe this time, it's, is that Justice? Yeah, a little, little double hand off there. Justice on Gary. Yeah, watch this. Little inside. Yeah, little uh, inside run inside. here on the counter. See this? Watch this right here. That takes perfect timing. It does. Really nice job by the Tartans. But, you know, FCA did a nice job reading it, but still picked up a first down. Well, you know, there, there's something to say for being able to do something, whatever sport it is, and do it really well. Yeah. And that's what they, that's their philosophy. We're going to do this, but we're going to do it really well. They're going to be in some wishbone formation. They're going to be in some wing formation. You see, you right, see look the how wing. tight they're bunched in. Yes. There. Handoff right up the middle, and just following that big offensive line, and another pickup of seven yards this on the play. Dylan Fitzgerald, the running back. I tell you, that's the, give a big shout out to their line on that play. They just absolutely moved the defense yes, they off. they did. In fact, one of the uh, offensive linemen was past the running back. He had pushed his man all the way downfield. Shoot, the, the way they're bunched in like that, it reminds me a lot of, you know, we talked about Hilliard, Hilliard Davidson before we came on the yep. air. We also, how about Lucas? Remember, we watched yes. Lucas a few years ago against uh, right. Fisher Catholic. They did a lot of the same thing. Good job here by Rusty Hutchison stopping that run for a loss. It's going to bring up a third down and seven for well, the Tartans. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look here, they, they, they got 11 there. Why not? Why aren't you having 11 in the box, you know? I mean, until they throw the ball, great job by Asher Rally as well. Yeah, great job he, by the Knights. Yeah, Rally made the initial hit. I think also in there was Caleb Debra, one of the big, uh, big players on defense for the Knights. Yeah, guys, and Deborah was really one of those players that jumped off the, play, the screen and really popped against uh, Fisher Catholic when we had Fairfield Christian yep. earlier this season. He's going to need to play some, make some plays tonight. He's quick, and I believe that's going to be a false start. Time nope, timeout. Time so, so Adderville East calls a timeout. Gives us a chance to uh, thank some of our sponsors who are on board tonight. Well, since the scoreboard's been clicking, let's say <laughs> tonight's first half scoreboard sponsor is Buckeye Automotive Family. The Buckeye Honda, Nissan, and Toyota dealerships would like to wish all of the local athletes best of luck this season. Learn more at BuckeyeCars.com. Westerville North leads Lancaster right now, 7-0 in the first quarter. There's no score at uh, Carl Fell Stadium at Bloom Carroll, 0-0 with them in Athens. Eastern, Reedsville Eastern leads Burn Union 7-0. That one in the first quarter. Check some other scores of interest.
Hilliard Darby leads Groveport Madison, 7-0. It's River over Bishop Rosecrans, 7 0. Reynoldsburg Gahanna Lincoln tied up 6 6. No score, Newark and Hilliard Bradley. West Muskingum and Union Local 0 0. Miller and Waterford 0 0. We'll continue to check some scores throughout the night tonight. Of week number 11, playoffs are underway and third down and seven here for the Tartans. Nice little jump there by McKinley getting over a would be tackler. A flag comes in as McKinley picks up the first down, but this might come back. He finished that run really strong. He did. He initiated the contact as a runner. They're going to talk about it here and see. I mean, the, the official that threw the flag was here on this near side, and he, he was right on top of the play. There is no penalty for hurdling. Okay. The, the player's hands were on the ground. Be fourth down. Player's hands were on the ground. I believe you're talking about the defender. Okay. I don't think you can hurdle a, a, a defender in defensive stance, ready to tackle, unlike collegiate or professional. Yeah. Safety. It's a safety rule. Guys, really that's nice a job. Sorry, Marion. I just to say, really nice job by the officials to come together and, and get Absolutely. that right. Go ahead, Marion. Oh, guys, that's a new one. If they'd have been hurdling back when I was in high school, I would have got called for a lot of penalties. <laughs> Good run there on first down. I tell you what, Shu, I don't know if you're watching Dustin Bailey, the offensive lineman, every play, he's got his man down the field, just pushing him backwards. Well, and you know, I, I, t I told you the first thing that you're going to have to watch tonight is the line play. Yeah. And that's where the games are deciding. They're, they're, right now, East is just taking it to they are. the Knights. Second and four for the Tartans. Right up the middle, handoff to Fitzgerald. And this time he's going to be wrapped up, I believe about a yard short of the first down. But this is the tempo they want. Mm -hmm. Let's make long drives, three yards, more yards. You know, just let's wear them down and see if the Knights can, you know, step up and, and, and put to them. And the key is, again, and you know, we, we've watched teams all year that predominantly run. You can't have pre-step penalties, and you can't make a mistake as far as ball position. Third and one for East. Here's Fitzgerald. He's got the first down. He's just being pushed. Look at that. <laughs> Another first down for the Tartans. Fitzgerald on the carry. You look at the, the sidelines, you know, Sideville East, there's not a lot of guys over there. I mean, it's a small roster, but, you know, so these guys, these big guys, they're going to have to take every advantage they can when they have timeouts and quarter changes to catch their breath. Yeah, most of the schools have to adjust, as you know, in Division yeah. 7. Here's McKinley. McKinley across the 20. And down near the 15-yard line, another good run by the senior, Norris McKinley. McKinley on the carry. Stem on the tackle for the Knights. How do you prepare when you've got, you know, an over 1,000-yard rusher, then you've got over an 800-yard rusher, well, 700? I mean, they, these guys. You have to prepare for the scheme, and plus, your defensive linemen have to be, you know, you're mono a mono sometimes. You've got to win the battle. There's a look at that sideline of Sayoteville East to see just the small numbers they have. A little bit of a mix up here. Cameron Justice took the handoff. He actually bumped into Caden Houston, the quarterback. And I think he's going to be real close to the first down. You're right on top of it, Marion. I think he's close. Yeah, they're moving the chains. Clock rolls down to 3.02 and counting here in the first quarter with Sayotteville East up 8-6. McKinley shuffles in motion, then takes the pitch, and wow, that time he lowered his shoulder and ran over top of a defender for the Knights and gets down inside the five. Another first down and goal here for the Tartans. Yeah, he really has active feet. Well, I mean, he, he really is quick with his feet. Not just speed and running, but he, his feet are really quick. Watch here on the replay how he just kind of maneuvered. Right, there, right ooh, there's one. Nice. There's one miss. And here's another one where, watch, right there, Jared. Yep. Just that little bit gets him to a half body yeah. on the defender. 
Fitzgerald right up the middle following his line, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Tartans. Yeah, that's impressive. That's some drive. That was a really good drive. Marion, I didn't have the pleasure of watching you play in high school and the lines that you got to run behind, but how about this offensive line that these running backs are able to run behind for the Tartans? Oh, as a running back, you're just salivating <laughs> running behind those guys, really. I mean, they just move the pile every time. I mean, the Knights are so challenged on the interior part of the line. I mean, I wonder if there's really anything they can do. I mean, when they just do that straight-ahead run, it's yeah. two or three yards, just chalk it up. Another double handoff, and it's in for the two-point conversion. This time it's Cameron Justice, Justice to convert, Cameron. making it 16-6. Give it up for a two-point conversion. <laughs> it's not a lot to say. I mean, it's pretty evident what we see. I'm impressed. They've totally dominated the line of scrimmage. But like I said, you, you don't rush for 3,500 3, yards in a season, not have, right. you know, I mean, one thing you could, I mean, if, if you're Fairfield Christian, the one thing that may be a possibility, and you saw on the, the play before the touchdown, you saw Hutchinson really shoot the gap there, is really try to jump the, the snap count and just try to make some, you know, chaos in the backfield and somehow, yep. some way, you know, use your quickness to try to beat those offensive linemen to the spot if they try to get out on the perimeter. But if they're coming at you north and south straight ahead, there's not a whole lot you can do with the size disadvantage. Quick check of some other scores. Bloom Carroll leads Athens 9-0, that game in the first quarter. Lancaster has tied it up uh, with Westerville North 7-7 in the first quarter. Reedsville Eastern leads Burn Union 14-0, that one also in the first quarter down in Reedsville in nice. Meigs County. Yeah, Reedsville's number one seed in the region, right? Yep, my nephew Brock Stewart is the athletic director at Reedsville Eastern. Wow. My brother's the head baseball coach there. How often, Shu, do you see a six foot three, three hundred and twenty-five pound place kicker? I can't recall <laughs> when, Jared. To be honest with you, <laughs> Hayden Conkle <laughs> to kick it off. He's just a junior, as well. I mean, he's he's a man. So the Tartans lead at sixteen six. The Knights will get their second crack on offense. After this kickoff, they moved the ball well, just did not convert on the two-point conversion. They're going to have to, they're going to have to match them score for score tonight, and then hope for a turnover at some point. And the onside kick it goes out of bounds, and that'll be in FCA's favor. Yeah, it's considered illegal procedure on the kickoff. Penalty flag on the field. Actually, even might have been touched before it went 10 yards. Yeah, we see referee Larry Scheiber here. Illegal procedure on the kicking team, number 77. Ball will be placed at where it went out of bounds. Will be first down. Penalties kick out of bounds. Ball will be placed at the 49-yard line. First down, 10, Fairfield Christian. First and 10 nights. Already inside of Tartan territory at the 49-yard line, and the Tartans jump off sides. That's three they're, times. They're pointing at FCA, but I didn't see anybody on FCA's Five. side move. Dead ball, encroachment, number 25 on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. I tell you, when you when you already do those squib kicks and onside kicks, you're already giving them really good field position, exactly. and then penalties like that gonna really hurt. First and five for the Knights for the second time. Yeah, empty backfield, Jared. <laughs> and we've got a whistle and a flag. It's going to be a false start. He's allowed to turn. Officials are talking about it. Yeah, they're going to get together and wave it off. You know, I always said of all the sports in officiating, there, there's some that there's t there were a couple times I can remember. I wish I could have waved a couple off yeah. too. Look at this setup. You've yeah. got four receivers yep. to the bottom of the screen here. 
And Blair's going to take the short screen, get across the 40, inside the 40, across the 30, and finally brought down. Really good catch and run by Danny Blair. Yeah, that, I mean, if they just get the ball in space, they're, they're going to be difficult. I mean, we're in for a track meet tonight, Jared. And as soon as he catches it, he knows exactly what he wants to do, where he wants to go. Danny Blair's an impressive football player for the Knights. Same setup here for FCA. Welsh out of the shotgun. Four receivers to the right side, one to the left. Welsh looking to pass, has time. Looking to the end zone. It is caught. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch. Gabe Welsh to Rusty Hutchison for the touchdown. He, he saw, laid it right over top did. of the defender. He saw he had one-on-one -on -one coverage out there, and with Rusty's speed, there's just no way, Jake. There's no way. I mean, you can't throw it any better. Laid it right in there. That's really not bad coverage. He just ran by him, Jared. I mean, he, you know, it's it's good luck with that. And Rusty's only a sophomore. I mean, the one thing you tell the defender, at least put your hands up. Yes. I mean, he had, I mean, he, you know, spacing seemed fine. He just didn't get a hand up. I'm not sure what the over-under was for tonight, <laughs> but I, I want the over. <laughs> well, there is a, uh, there's a website. That, uh, that predicts winners and, and what the score uh, and how much they'll win by as FCA goes for two and they get it to cut it to within two at 16-14. Well, it's going to come down to one of the teams is going to have, you know, a mistake. Right. You know, a loss of possession. Something's going to happen or a special teams thing's going to happen because at this rate, you know, we're going to have a 60-some to 60-some yeah. game here tonight. And at what point, I mean, you know, maybe your kicker doesn't have the greatest leg. I don't know, but we haven't seen them kick. But at what point do you decide we need to kick it a little deeper? Yeah. I, I, well, I think it's dangerous to kick it to FCA deep. Just yeah. because of their open But even field if they running. can kind of get it over that first yeah. layer of guys. You I know. mean, that was, yeah, that was less than 50 yards on the draw. Right. You know, and then you add a five-yard penalty to start it. So. Yep. And Gabe Welsh is right on the money oh, tonight. Yeah. You know. He's throwing the ball well. I mean, he threw for over 1,000 yards this year. I mean, yeah. you know, we're, we're looking at a, you know, a really, really good quarterback. One so, of the best in Division Seven. Yep. Minute 56 to go in the first quarter. FCA has cut it to within two at 16-14. And, and the good thing for people, uh, fans, and for Fairfield Christian is those two are only juniors. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And Danny Blair. I and Hutchison also. is a sophomore. Yeah. I mean, Danny Blair's a junior. Yes. Welsh is a junior. Hutchison's a sophomore. T.J. Blair's a sophomore. There's a bright future there. Absolutely. This kickoff drops, and it's still on the ground, and finally... The Tartans fall on it. Number seven, Keegan Barker falls on it. Now the Knights got to come up with something defensively because now, the, yeah, the Tartans got to drive it, you know, 81 yards here. Yeah, let's You've go got to make them drive it. Let's go yeah. down to Marion. Yeah, no, guys, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. You know, it, this is a very impactful drive for the Knights here to see if they can provide some sort of resistance um, against Iotaville. But I will tell you one thing, guys, just a quick observation on the offensive end. Kudos to that offensive line because the same mismatch that they're having on the defensive yep. end, you know they're having it on the offensive end, and those offensive linemen are finding a way to hold their blocks because these are not short routes. I mean, those are two deep routes that the Knights have been able to hit for touchdowns, and so kudos to the offensive line being able to hold up for that. Fitzgerald on first down out across the 25-yard line, pick up a five on the play. Fitzgerald on the carry, set on the tackle for the Knights. Second down and five as the clock down to a minute and a half to play in the first quarter. Here comes McKinley. McKinley trying to get outside across the 30 and will finally be brought down at the 36-yard line. Another first down for the Tartans. He did a great job of freezing the defender and then turning it on. Uh, guys, I'm looking at this roster. They've got McKinley listed at 5'9", 160. He just landed right next to me. He does not yeah. look 5'9", 160. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> he, he's got some good size to him, and when he runs by, with that speed and that power, he's a load to bring down. <laughs> Quarterback going to keep it this time, going around the right side, following some blockers, and he's going to make it up to the, about the 44-yard line. 
That's Caden Houston on that's, the carry. That's the first time we've seen Caden carry the ball tonight. I mean, just listen to these offensive stats. Norris McKinley, 150 rushes for 1,353 yards and 26 touchdowns. Cameron Justice, 120 carries, 909 yards and eight touchdowns. Dylan Fitzgerald, 127 carries, 888 yards and nine touchdowns. Flag comes in as they're going to run for a first down here, but this one might come back. Justice on the carry for Sayogadel. Embry on the initial contact with a nice penalty flag. We'll on see the what, uh, what the call is from our referee, Larry Shiver. Illegal formation on the offense. Only not enough men in the line of scrimmage. We will repeat second down. It's amazing you can have 11 men in a small box and you can't have seven on the line. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah, that's you know, true. I mean, I mean they've got everybody between the hashes. That's what I mean. I mean, it's, it's, there's no way that you, you, you can make that mistake. Backs him up second down and. About eight here. Clock inside of 25 seconds to play here in the first quarter. McKinley, a double handoff to Justice. Justice, quick burst of speed across midfield and down inside Knight territory, brought down at the 39. You can see here, again, lined up in that double wing, just a little inside. Cam runs hard. You know, like we said, he's not that big, but boy, he has a fierce, fierce competitive nature yeah. to him. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter with the Scioteville East Tartans on top 16 to 14. In this Division 7, Region 27, first round playoff matchup. And as a reminder, you can find live and past games on our, games on our YouTube channel. Not just this, you can search CLN, your hometown connection on YouTube to find games and other local programming. While you're there, make sure to click subscribe so you won't miss any action. And also, if you're on Facebook and X, once called Twitter, check us out on those social media platforms as well. Just search for Interphase Video Productions. There's there what it looks like that's on the Facebook. Facebook. That's what, when you log in, that's what it is right there. Yeah, I don't even think you have to log in on Facebook to be able to view Just it. Just click the links. Yeah. yeah. Glad to have you along with us in this first round matchup. Check some other scores again tonight. Bloom Carroll uh, leads Athens 9-0 out in Carroll tonight. Lancaster and Westerville North tied up at 7. Eastern leads Burn Union 14-0. Want to check, uh, scroll down and try to check River and Rosecrans because the winner of this game will move on to take on the winner of that one. At last check, it was no score early. Well, we've seen the River Pilots before oh, down yeah. here. Mike Flannery's team's pretty doggone yes, good they usually. Are. Right now they lead 14-7 over Rosecrans. First and 10 for the Tartans here. And was that Justice again? Yes. Or Fitzgerald. Yeah, there was Fitzgerald. A nice little nice. run there. Yep. They just come off the ball. Their line <laughs> comes off the ball really yeah. well. Second down and seven. No secret to what uh, what's coming. Yep, there's the wishbone. The right only here. secret is who's going to run it. This time it's going to be Norris McKinley. And McKinley, another first down up to about the 25-yard line. Take us back to the Oklahoma days here, the old wishbone yeah. formation. You, you mentioned earlier that you know this has the feel of a game where it's going to take a mistake uh, from one of the teams to capitalize. And, and this Tartan team, you know, you talked to Coach Adam Bailey this week, and he said that really bit them uh, against Sportsman Notre Dame last week. He said they've been not poor with pre-snap penalties and turnovers, but they're, they're up and down. Yeah. He said we've been one game, he says, 
you know, can't figure it out. Well, and the turnovers as well. They, they had a couple against uh, Notre Dame, did yeah. they not? Yeah, that, you know, they lost the game 50 to 42 to a pretty wow. good team. And had the lead. Yes. You know, and, and East is only eight miles outside of Portsmouth. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big game. That is. You know, it's good to end your season with a rival game right. like that because it carries some momentum for you into the – even if you got beat and you played well like they, they did overall, gets you right into the playoffs with a little momentum. Yep. On second down. Oh, he slipped and fell. Justice trying to turn the corner, and he slipped and fell right about the line of scrimmage. So it's going to bring up a third down and six. Yeah, I think he caught the foot of one of the linemen. He might have when he was coming around that right side. Well, here, if you're Fairfield Christian, why not just send everybody? Might as well. Just send the house. You're having trouble, you know, dealing with the, you know, the, the play inside. Just go get them. Fitzgerald again. What a hole right there on the left side. And he has the first down Balls across out. the 15-yard line. He fumbled. Out. Wow. Good call, Marion. We did not see that from up here. And there's that turnover that we talked yep. about, Shu. That's exactly right. <laughs> Gonna have to see this Dagger Law replay to see where it, here watch, it is. Yeah, watch and see if he just pulled it away from him, from Dylan Fitzgerald. Yep, the hit right there. Might have jarred it loose. Number 11 for Fairfield Christian, Jimmy Schmitz. With the initial hit, I think that might might have knocked it loose and then it came out. We'll see if the, uh, the Knights can capitalize here on that turnover. Welsh looking to pass to the near side. It's completed out across the 30, still on his feet. Across the 40, he fumbles, but it goes out of bounds. Hutchison was on the reception. I think he was already considered out of bounds okay. when the ball came loose. So first and 10 nights. Hey, if you live close, come on out. If you want to watch offense, you're going to Absolutely. you're seeing plenty of it tonight. Yep. yep. Welsh with Blair to his right. Welsh again looking to pass, has time. Now it's going to collapse on him. He's going to be sacked. Yeah, credit their defense secondary that time a little bit. Gave yeah. him, you know, he had plenty of time, Jared, actually, in my opinion. Yeah, he did. You know, but the line kept pursuing, kept him in the pocket. Brings up a second down and 14 for FCA. Have not seen Blair yet on this possession. Touch the football that is, he's definitely in the game. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen, one up, two up to the top. Welsh looking to pass down the middle of the field, well overthrown and almost intercepted by Caden Houston. That was dangerous. Yeah, just really overthrown. Houston on the coverage. Pass Gonna bring up a third down and long for the Knights. Go, Come on, fellas. Go back to that other formation, Jared, with yep. empty backfield. You have a quad over there on the right. And usually Welsh. when they're in the squad, these quads, guys, you see a screen to someone, yeah. likely Blair. This time he's going to throw it near side to Hutchison. Hutchison doing it with his feet. He has the first down. Hutchison still on his feet across the 40 and knocked out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Great one after catch by Rusty Hutchison. Well, Marion said they did. Blair popped back because he's like a safety valve. Yeah. But, you know, he, that's got to be read by your quarterback. But he saw Rusty open here and got him the ball, and Rusty did the rest. Watch Look this. that. Really good move getting around both of those guys. Whoop. There you go. Yeah. First and 10 nights at the Tartan 31-yard line. Welsh going to keep it himself on the direct snap across the 30 and down to about the 25-yard line. Pick up of six on the play. Welsh on the keeper. Oh, 
Second and four. Other than that run, it's been an all passing possession for the Knights. Welsh again looking to pass, fakes it. Oh, he is hit hard and wrapped up by Hayden Conkle. He just didn't see him coming. <laughs> Watch this Dagger Law replay. He's looking to the left. I know, but I don't know how you couldn't see him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that's like a Mack truck coming through the... <laughs> yeah. Okay. You guys, it looked like the Knights had a double move called on that, and I, I just think you're tempting fate on that. You know, you're asking a lot of your offensive line to hold those blocks even on a three-step yeah. drop. You know, on a double move like that, that's, that's asking a lot to block, block that front. Third and 11. Welsh again with pressure. Fires over the middle. He's got his man Hutchinson. Hutchinson across the 10. It's a foot race to the end zone. Touchdown, Knights. <laughs> no chance for the defensive backfield once he gets the ball. And the Knights with their first lead of the night, 20 to 16. <laughs> Rusty had nine touchdowns this year. That's three tonight. <laughs> <laughs> What poise by Gabe Welsh. He really hung in there. That oh, he knew it was he coming. He knew it was, the hit was coming, yeah. <laughs> Guys, you could probably give the player of the game out tonight with seven <laughs> right now with seven <laughs> minutes remaining in the <laughs> second quarter. I tell you what, yeah. Hutchinson has taken over. And he's just a sophomore. Keep that in mind as you continue to watch this game. Now, it's week number 11 for the sophomore, but still, on the two-point conversion attempt, it's going nowhere. It will be stopped, so they will maintain just a four-point lead, 20 to 16, but it is the first lead of the night for the Fairfield Christian Knights. Well, they got their break, got the turnover, yep. and turned it into points. You know, they haven't been stopped yet. Right. You know, they're three for three on drive. East is two for three because of the turnover. So that, that's a big thing in this game tonight because whoever has the ball last may win this game. Yeah. And we had just mentioned about the turnovers yeah. and that, you know, this, this might be a game where who's going to make the first mistake? You know, we talked about the turnovers that uh, East had last week at Portsmouth Notre Dame and right. what does Fairfield Christian do? They take the football, they march it down the field, take a lead after the turnover. Well, I'm not real superstitious in things, but when you have a full moon out there, <laughs> there's usually different things happen. Yeah. I mean, and what are we, about, what, four days from Halloween, yeah. five days? I mean, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I'm thinking. It doesn't feel like it right now. No, the, it the might temperature on, night. It might on trick or treat night. Yeah, it's supposed to be yeah. in the 40s, but. Yeah. No, it's just, it's just, it's just interesting. Yeah, it yeah, is. We're sitting here staring at a full moon right in our face, <laughs> except for now the the clouds yeah. have gone by. So Hutchinson will kick it away for FCA. For the Justice and McKinley back for Sotaville East. Short kick. I don't blame him for kicking it away from Justice and McKinley. Yeah, that's a, that's a good ploy right there. It'll be taken by Amani Brown, and he's wrapped up pretty much immediately. Amani Brown, six foot two, two hundred twenty-five pound freshman. Well, when I look at, I mean, you look at this, I mean, both teams coming in are averaging over 30 points a game, and both are giving up 24 or more. Yeah. So, you know, we got what we expect, yeah. maybe even a yeah. little more. That's true. You know, they're, they're, adrenaline's flowing, they're all cranked up. Seven oh seven to play in the first half. Here we go, back to the wings, double wing offense, away from the wishbone. McKinley. In motion, takes the hand, the, I guess a little bit of a pitch almost. That's yeah, more of a power run there. Did they take it away again? I think they took it from him. They did. This time coming away for it with it for the Knights is number 22. I don't have a 22 on my roster. Or was it 12? No, it was 22. Officials are still talking about it. Are they talking about forward progress maybe? Probably. Because it definitely stopped. But they're going to give FCA the football. I do not have a 22. I have to look and see for FCA. That is Parker Couch. Parker Couch. 
I had him listed as 13, so we'll have to make that change. 22, Parker Couch comes away with it for the Knights. Oh, well, let's see if they can be four for four on drives here, Jared. <laughs> Blair stands to the right of Welsh, first and 10. Welsh looking to pass, has pressure, and he is sacked again. That's gonna be about a seven yard loss on that play. Yeah, I just shot the gap. McKinley got to him. That's a good adjustment defensively. Like Marion was saying, you know, the, the run longer patterns takes time. Just hey, put yeah. pressure on the quarterback. Yep. Three receivers to the bottom, one out to the top. Welsh has been working out of the shotgun all night, and that's going to be forward progress. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, it's going to be illegal motion. On FCA, out here on the near side, just moved a little early. Dead ball, false start, number zero on the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. There's our officials tonight. We've already mentioned referee Larry Shiver, umpire Chad Story, head linesman Tyler Borland, line judge Jarrett Story, the back judge is Finley Borland, and the center judge is Rick Alton. How often do you see two sets of father-sons on an officiating crew, Shoe? Not very often. Quite unique. Yeah. Second down and 22 for the Knights here. Welsh looking to pass down the near sideline. Rusty Hutchins is out there, and he runs under <laughs> it. It's a touchdown, Fairfield Christian. <laughs> I cannot cover Rusty Hutchinson. Not at all. He just threw it to a spot. He just threw it to the spot, and he ran under it. Wow. Four touchdowns for Rusty Hutchison. In the first half. In the first half. Pretty amazing. Look at the Beautiful throw. pass. Wow. I mean, the percentages of that being completed a lot, Jared, <laughs> are not real high. No, you're right. Credit to the players. Here they go. Hey, something different, a kick on the extra point. <laughs> and it will be Hutchinson to kick it. Out of the hold of Jimmy Schmitz. It is up and it is good. And with six minutes left to play in the first half, the Fairfield Christian Knights extend their lead to 11, 27 to 16. Uh-oh, Hutchinson's belt broke. As he comes off the field, handing the belt over, he better find him a new one. Yeah, that could slow him down. <laughs> <laughs> Marion, how impressed are you with the, <laughs> the passing of Gabe Welsh and then Hutchinson just being an athlete? All right, guys, and for all the love that Rusty Hutchinson is getting, rightfully so, that was an amazing pass. Yes. <laughs> a, a, a absolutely amazing pass by Gabe Welsh. I mean, he just laid that out there perfectly. And Hutchinson, I mean, he was already on a dead sprint, yep. didn't have to break stride at all, just right in the perfect place where it had to be. Fantastic job by both the quarterback and the receiver on that play. The last two touchdown passes, Welsh to Hutchinson, have been as good as you'll see absolutely in high school football i mean just he laid them perfectly they're, they're so in tune together and gabe does a great job because he's not rolling out and throwing these he, he's he's staying in the pocket and knowing that there's going to be a pressure. hit yes sometimes he does a great job hanging in there so the knights lead it now 27 16 they will kick it off the tartans have turned it over twice, and FCA has taken advantage both times. In a row. Yep. You know, they had the lead, and they've given up two straight touchdowns. And guys, that may be the one disadvantage. You have these really big backs that are able to run through tackles. It takes two, three guys to bring them down. But remember, when it takes two, three guys to bring them down, that second and third guy are coming to punch the ball out. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just it's a matter of time. They really got to squeeze that ball, Scioteville, that is, when they, uh, you know, have other back, other defenders coming in and not take them, bring, take them down. This kick goes out of bounds by Hutchinson. So that'll give East a little Illegal bit better procedure. field position. On the kicking team, ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, first down. I think this is a very important possession for Scioteville East. You have six minutes to go in the first half. FCA will get the ball to start the second half. You've got to get points right here. They do, um, because what happens is the gap gets too wide, yeah. and then the clock becomes an enemy. Right now, they got to get points. 
I mean, they, we know they can run the ball. They've been quite effective and efficient. Yeah. But it's they got to make a drive here and just consume the end of the quarter, six minutes to go here, and get some points. Justice on the carry this time. You see him putting both arms around the football. FCA definitely going for it. Hey, if you can't stop him, take the ball away. I mean, Why there's not? nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I think every D1 university and professional team teaches that. Yep. Anyway, you know, turn, try to get a turnover. Second down and five after the five-yard carry for Cameron Justice. Wishbone again. Lost the football, did Houston, had to pick it up himself, and this one's going to be a loss on the play. Back near the 35-yard line, they'll spot it right about the 36. Yeah, and see, that's the down and distance you don't want to play yep. if you're side of it. Right. You don't want third and ten. Watch here. Loss on the play. He never put it in his belly. I'm not sure that he wanted to give it to him. I think he was trying to get around him. Well, when you when you run that wishbone, that's part of the you know series is you have a belly series, and sometimes they allow him to pull it, and yeah. then you know you, you kick it to the uh, back and the, get on the perimeter. But he just really never stuck it in there, Jared. Norris McKinley splitting out wide to the left side to the top of the screen. We haven't seen that really tonight as Houston looking to pass. Rolling out, has pressure, fires over the middle. It's short of his intended receiver, Cameron Justice. Yeah, that's He not rolled game. left and tried to pass it back to the middle. We've only had this discussion now for five <laughs> weeks, and Mark and I have gone back and forth over and over. But it just doesn't usually work. Right. I think maybe the best quarterback we've seen that does that is Thanthanavong at Carroll. Yeah. Yep. As far as going opposite direction. Watch here how hard this is. Yeah, he, he just pretty much had to stop. Wait, you know, he, he got nothing on the ball. Yeah. He had no momentum throwing yeah. back to the middle yeah, that's when tough. he was going to the left. So it brings up a fourth down and nine, and Sciotoville takes a timeout with just a few minutes to play. 434 to play here in this first half, trailing 27 to 16. What a game so far. I mean, if like you said, if you like offense. Yeah. Burn Union is the place to be tonight to watch FCA inside of it. It is. It's entertaining. And if you're sitting at home and you're a few, just a few miles away, <laughs> come on down. Watch the second half. Of course, half. we don't mind you watching online. No. You know, watching, you know, because you get the comfort of your home. You get yes. the replays. But I will say. And the refrigerator is closer, right? But I will say yeah. that you cannot beat the concession stand here at Burn Union. No. Cannot beat Outstanding. it. Outstanding. Fabulous. Want to say thanks to Joe Lynn Pugh, who uh, does a great job running uh, the concession stand. Uh, she hooks us up all the time, every time we're down here. Uh, and, of course, Danny Snively, we mentioned him as well. I mean, look at the spread behind us, uh, that uh, pizza and food. And, of course, this is all being done while their team is away. I mean, yes. you know, they this is, this is big for them to be able to step up and host this game. There's the concession stand here at Burn Union. A lot of good things happening down here in the Grove. We'll see what happens here on fourth down and nine. They're going to go for it. McKinley's going to take the direct snap. He's looking to pass. He's got his man, but he's shy of the – whoa! Wow, he stiff-armed, but he didn't have enough legs left no, to get the first down. No, he didn't. Good job defensively. T.J. Blair, I believe – no, it was uh, Chris Hutchinson on the stop. Watch here. McKinley's going to throw this pass. Little halfback pass. They needed nine, and they threw a four-yard pass. I mean, he had, after the stiff arm, if he could have just kept his feet and not gone out of bounds, he had plenty of room for the first down. Just not that simple. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> to stop your momentum. Yeah. I think McKinley just showed he could play wherever he wants to play. Yep. Threw that ball. Looked like a run-and-shoot quarterback right there. If the Knights can punch one in right here, right before half, and then get the ball Ooh. to start the second half, it could be lights out for the Tartans. Here's a good run right up the middle for the Knights. But they really haven't shown the run tonight. And we know Danny Blair is a really good yeah. runner. He's had a great year rushing the ball, like we said, over 1,200 yards. He's tough, he's good, he's fast, he can do it all. First and 10 nights after the first down run by Danny Blair. He's going to run it again. This time he's wrapped up right as soon as he took the handoff. Number 12, Dylan Fitzgerald, the first man to get him. Danny 
Blair on the carry. Xander Cook on the tackle. Loss of the play brings up second down. Cook on the tackle along with Fitzgerald. Steve Westerman on the uh, chain gang tonight. Got you some time on the air, Steve. Make sure you're moving those chains well. It's always a price, Jared. There's I tell you, the price. chain gang has had a lot of action tonight they moving sure up and have. down the field. And they're going to have to move again, maybe. It's close to, yeah, maybe about a four yards short here. Yeah, we got a big play here, third down. They switched, the switch, they flipped the switch here a little bit, Jared, and they're running the ball. I drive. wonder if they're just trying to run time here at the well, end of the half. Well, that and they, they, they like to be balanced. Yeah. And, but, but you know what? If you got Rusty Hutchison, <laughs> I like what he does too. Absolutely. <laughs> I wonder if he has the uh, 7 Eleven chain like Jamar <laughs> Chase does, always open. Here is Hutchison. Hutchison across the 10, 5, diving into the end zone. Touchdown, Rusty Hutchison, this time on a handoff. Wow. Five touchdowns tonight for Rusty Hutchinson. I would say Rusty is not Rusty. He, he is looks definitely sharp. not Rusty. No. Wow. He's a playmaker. <laughs> How dynamic is and that? And now he's going to kick the extra point. FCA will call time. He needs a breather before he kicks this. Now he's got 31 of the points so far. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Marion, you've been around football a long time. Do you, do you ever remember a player with five touchdowns in the first half? Never, never. And I, I had a teammate, Nathan Schaefer, uh, my sophomore year at Heath, and he scored seven in a game, and I thought that was the mo probably the most impressive high school performance I'd ever seen. This tops it by far. <laughs> I mean, I, guys, I, I'm speechless. Yeah. I mean, th this kid's amazing. I, you know, and again, had you asked me coming into this game, I'd have said, you know, the matchup to watch would have been uh, Blair and McKinley, and those would be the two yep. playmakers. And Hutchinson, I mean, you got to just take your hats off. He has just literally taken over this game. And again, just a sophomore they don't list uh, size on their on their roster that they give us uh, maybe they did let me see here rusty is listed five foot five 135 pounds as it kicks in that extra point to make it 34 16 five foot five five hard, touchdowns hard to find him <laughs> you know he's super fast he's like you fast forward him you know <laughs> So the Knights, 34-16, leaders over Scioteville. I tell you, Scioteville started the game re looking really, really impressive. Two turnovers, FCA converted on both. Well, and then and they then had a, they had a stall breakdown. there on that last yeah, one. A little breakdown, yep. and you know what? To FCA's credit, they have not blinked. Right. Check out some other scores. Uh, Reedsville Eastern leads Burn Union 28 to nothing. That one in the second quarter. Uh, Westerville North leads Lancaster 21 to 14 in the second quarter. Lots of points going on there. Bloom Carroll leads Athens 37 to 7 in the second quarter. Big points being put up by the Bulldogs. Looks like uh, if they can hold on, they're going to be moving on. Groveport Madison trails Hillier Darby 7 0. It's West Muskingum over Union Local 21 14 in the second quarter. Pickerington North leads Westerville Central 14 0 in the listed in the first quarter. As Hutchinson kicks it off this time deep. And it will finally roll into the end zone for a touchback. Jackson leads Marietta 21 to seven. That's an important game because if Bloom Carroll wins, they will move on to play the winner of that one, which most likely will be Jackson and at Jackson. Holds yes. field. Waterford leads Miller 14 to nothing. Trying to find that River and Rosecrans score because that's the game that uh, FCA is concerned with because they would play the winner. 
First and 10 here for the Tartans. They desperately need to get some points on the board in this drive, and they're not going to do it here. A really good defensive push there by the Knights. So now they're just sending people to shoot the gaps, Jared. And, you know, I think at some point you have to make that adjustment because there's really no fear of them throwing the ball at right, this point. Right, right. Even though they've, they're, they're wide now with an open backfield. This time, is he going to keep it? Is he going to throw it? He's going to keep it, and he gets about five or six. Then he's taken down really late out of bounds. No flag coming in, but Caden Houston with a late decision to keep it. Bring up a third down at about five. Well, and guys, we've talked about it several times, games in the past. Football is such a game of momentum. Yeah. I mean, and, and those runs that uh, the Tartans have been doing and, and getting four, five, seven yards a pop, now they're not getting any push. Uh, and, and again, you know, we've talked about the size mismatch. It's just because Fairfield Christian just has that juice right now. Here's a big run for Cameron Justice. That's a first down across the 40. Justice on the carry. Schmitz with the initial contact for the Knights. So this was the last play. Watch Steve Westerman on the uh, chains here. He wanted some camera time. We'll watch him. Hey, I'm getting out of the way. <laughs> he saw him coming. Here's a big run here by Norris McKinley. Nobody's going to catch him. He's into the end zone. Touchdown for the Tartans. 60 yards that wow. time. He makes it look easy. He Good does. Tartans touchdown. As soon as I say that, guys, they run off <laughs> <laughs> two long runs. So I think the Knights would advise me to stay quiet for the rest of the game. So the Tartans now down by 12. We'll see if they decide to. I think they are going to go for two. I'm not, I'm not sure they're very confident in a kicking game. I saw no statistics uh, from place kicking. So they will go for two. Yeah. And they move early. Got to go five more yards. That'd be final deal. Yeah, Cam Justice. Dead ball. False start, number 25 on ball the offense. Will be a five yard five penalty. Yard penalty. Still the try down. Yeah, just, just a little 20, excited there. Two five. Yeah. I mean, I guess at this point, why not? I mean, two touchdowns, you know, you're down by 12. Well, think about two it. Two touchdowns ties it. If you have questionable kicking, and if you make 50% of your go for twos, it's equal, yeah. Jared. I mean, and if you practice it, here they go with just McKinley one McKinley out of the shotgun. Little jump pass, and he's got it. It's completed to Keegan Barker for the two-point conversion. Six foot three, 230-pound tight end. Barker on the conversion to make it 34-24. And I will say that they are not the only team from the Portsmouth area that goes for two every time, as well as a lot of onside kicks. Uh, Portsmouth Notre Dame, a very interesting philosophy, who just beat Scioteville last week by eight points. They never punt. They never kick it down the field. They kick the onside kick every time. They go for it on fourth down every time, and they go for two every time, regardless of the score. So if you're a kicker, you're saying, don't go to Portland Notre Dame. <laughs> exactly. Is that what it means? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, guys, I used to hate playing Madden against guys like that, so I can only imagine what it's like to coach against it. So the Tartans have to feel pretty good about that drive. Uh, it was a nice quick win. They were able to score, but now you've got a minute 42 left. You have to play defense here and, yeah. and keep uh, keep FCA out of the end zone. FCA, or keep Rusty Hutchinson out of the yeah, end zone. FCA has not had a stalled drive. That's right. They've five scored every five. time. Yeah. <laughs> five five and, possessions. And they've had some long third downs, and they had a they had a third and, and a goal from the 22, 23-yard line through a touchdown pass. And they have no fear. And, and, you know, like I said, one of the first things that Coach Bailey told me, he goes, we have to take away big plays if we want a chance. And that hasn't happened. Right. That has Blair, not happened Andy tonight. Conco to kick it away. Blair and Blair back to receive the kick. Back deep anyway. I doubt it will get to them. They've overloaded the far side because that's where most of the kicks have gone tonight, or all the kicks have gone. Nothing has come to the near side. This one goes through the hands of 
One of the up men at the 30-yard line. Is that Hutchinson? Hutchinson coming across. He's still on his feet. Hutchinson okay. across the 40, across the 50, and finally <laughs> brought down at the 49-yard line of Scioteville East. It's almost like... He made something out of nothing there. Yeah, he's, he's just, you know, he dances with the ball. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, he just makes That's people miss. He's, he's shifty. He's hard to catch. Sure is. Guys, if he'd have broke that one, I might have went home. <laughs> I, I, uh, wow. And he almost did. <laughs> Can we get him on Madden? <laughs> oh, my. He's like a cheat code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> first and ten nights with a minute and 30 to play in the first half. Welsh looking to pass. He's going to loft one out there. He's got a man. He's open. It's caught at the 20-yard line down inside the 15, T.J. Blair. T.J.'s had a really good last half of the season for the night. Yeah. Both, it, both sides of the ball. He's really come along. He's a sophomore. Oh, yeah. Trip. There's nobody there, Jared. Nice job by TJ. They've got him so spread out defensively. They're just they're not ha they're having trouble matching up in the secondary. I mean, Welsh might end up with four or five hundred yards passing. Yes, he tonight. may. Maybe in the first half. That's true. <laughs> I would love to see the stats on where he is right now. Under a minute to play in the first half. Welsh looking to pass near side and. A sliding catch by Blair. A flag comes in. He might call offensive pass interference. Well, there may have been blocking there. May have been a little pick. Flag on the field. Pass interference. Defense number. Oh wait, maybe. I think it was an illegal pick. Pass interference. Offense. Yeah. Number two. It's a 15-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's a big one, 15-yarder. Yeah, that's the first mistake Rusty's had all night. I don't so. know if we have, yeah, here we go. Let's see it. Watch him here. He's right. Yeah, we're, we're still Okay, right, right there. there, yep. Yep. He's still blocking him. Yeah. Yeah, guys, Coach Pardon knew it immediately. He was, you know, he was right on Rusty as soon as he came to the sideline to tell him what he did wrong on that one. Yeah. Still first down, and we're winding it. Okay. So it's going to be first down and 20. Whistle works. Yeah, I don't think that affects <laughs> for oh. Christian. Bad snap. He lost it again and picks it up. Almost just dribbled it. Welsh incomplete. Intended for Nate Hampton, and there's a flag back in the backfield. I think we had a hold. Six zero blue. At that point, how can you blame blue. the offensive line? I mean, you see your quarterback running for his life, and you're just trying to keep him safe. And FCA will take a timeout with 38.6 seconds showing on the clock. Coach Pardon is, boy, he's really giving it to him in the in the huddle here. He's definitely wanting some points here, but he's got a lot to make up. The well, since we can smell all that food like, flying up here, let's Dick. say thanks to Buffalo Wild Wings and thanks to Larry Tipton and the crew for great food, great service, and the best sports viewing in town. It's all at Buffalo Wild Wings in the Plaza Shopping Center on Milk Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Thirty-four twenty-four. FCA leads Scioteville East in this Division Seven Region Twenty Seven first round matchup. The winner. We'll move on to take on the winner of River and Rosecrans. So out of the timeout, FCA will have first down. And 35. Yeah. 35 yards. They can get a first down at the four-yard line. 39 seconds on the clock. Here's that setup with four receivers down to the bottom. 
Hutchinson is the lone receiver up to the far side. And this is where they'll either throw that screen to Danny Blair on the near side or they'll throw it over deeper to Hutchinson flying down the far sideline. Now, if they've got a one-on-one -on, -one on that far side, I would bet that they take another shot at it. Welsh going to screen it to Danny Blair. Danny Blair breaks one tackle. Danny Blair down the near sideline. 20, 15, inside the 10, slammed down at the five-yard line. FCA's in business again. Had a really good block out here, Jared. They, they just set him loose. Watch here. And it wasn't a crushing block. He just got in the way right there. Yep. Unleashed him. Clock McKinley. McKinley made the touchdown saving tackle. We're down inside of 25 seconds. It's running here in the first half. Here's Blair. Blair going to tiptoe into the end zone. Touchdown untouched. Does the scoreboard go up to 100? <laughs> I'm just curious. It doesn't look like there's a third <laughs> digit. FCA now on top, 40 to 24. Yes, you're seeing your screen right. It's still the second quarter. Yeah, how good have they been this quarter? Perfect on every possession. Yeah. Hutchinson, kick is up and good. And the Knights add to their lead, 41 to 24. We're told in our ear shoe that not only does the concession stand make outstanding, fabulous food, they delivered to our production truck. Look at that. I think those are my fries waiting on me, aren't they? <laughs> Get your hand out of those, Bob. <laughs> but FCA still with some business here. 17 seconds to play in the first half. They lead it 41 to 24 over Scioteville East. Boy, things just really fell apart for East after that first turnover. But FCA, is, uh, they've, they've turned it into another gear here. Oh, my. <laughs> it's actually something we haven't seen for a long time. That's like true. This. That you is know, true. So, so many big plays and explosiveness. It's quiet right now at the concession stand. But here in about 17 seconds, it's going to be busy. Hutchinson will kick it away. Back deep is McKinley and Justice for the Tartans. Hutchinson's kick will be taken at the eight yard line by Cameron Justice. Justice up the middle of the field. And he'll be brought down right about the 28. Justice on the return. And the Tartans will have 10 seconds brought down by to nice. play until halftime. Want to remind you, coming up at halftime, you will see our halftime band show. I'll tell you about that uh, momentarily, but you'll see the Fairfield Christian Academy Knights marching band. Tonight, I think it's our first look at them this year. So first to 10 here for the Tartans. Houston hands it to McKinley. McKinley following his blockers. McKinley up across the 35, near first down yardage. And the Tartans will call a timeout with 2.6 seconds showing on the clock. I mean, if McKinley gets a break, he can score, Jim. Yes, he can. He scored from 60 his last care, his last <laughs> possession. Gives us a chance to uh, tell you about our halftime band show, which is coming up. It'll be brought to you by the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, crematory and monuments, family-owned and operated since 1889. Check them out at funeralhome.com. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, respect for tradition, regard for change. And brought to you by Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do too. The difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. 
And Shio, I want to get a, a shout out to our Interphase Video Productions crew tonight. Uh, a little bit shorthanded, but still the outstanding production that we uh, that they always put together. Down in the truck tonight, producer director Bob Competti on graphics and replays and uh, pushing all the buttons. There's the the crew uh, in the truck: Shane Masita and Donnie Ziegfeld. And there's Bob on the far right. And uh, I hear that Donnie killed a mosquito just now. And who talks about mosquito? I mean, it's, what is it, 60-something <laughs> degrees? It's October. Cameras tonight, Josh Messerly and Tom Russo uh, doing a fine job on the cameras tonight. First and 10 here, going to be the last play of the first half. Little screen pass. This is going to be a double pass. Looking downfield, it's lofted out there and incomplete. It was intended for number seven, Keegan Barker. Pass was thrown by Amani Brown. And that's how the first half will end with the Fairfield Christian Knights on top of Sciotaville East, 41 to 24. What a first half that was. <laughs> I'm almost speechless, really. I mean, we, we've talked about it the whole half, so we'll see what happens the next time. Halftime band show is coming your way. Stay with us. You're watching the Buffalo Wild Wings Interface Video Productions High School Football Game of the Week. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H, The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. Food Market is Fairfield County's source for high-quality, locally sourced meats. The meat case is always full of quality, fresh beef, pork, gourmet burgers, and gourmet brats for you and your family to enjoy. Bay Food Market cures and smokes their own hams, bacon, and sausage. Visit Bay Food Market at the corner of Maple and Walnut Streets in Lancaster and discover the Bay Food Market difference. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., closed Thursday and Sunday. Bay Food Market, proudly serving Fairfield County families for more than 90 years.
Hi, I'm Christine Simmons with the United Way of Fairfield County. Our mission is to utilize all resources to achieve the greatest impact on our local needs, and this can only be accomplished by local support and generous donations from businesses like Buckeye Toyota and Buckeye Honda's Buckeye Cares program. That means Buckeye will make a donation to the United Way with each vehicle sold. From all of us at United Way, we say thank you, Buckeye, for all your support. Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Where can I find advanced heart care? When you choose Fairfield Medical Center for your heart care, you'll find confidence in our expertise and peace of mind in our compassion. Your health is important, and our heart and vascular experts specialize in the latest technology and treatments to keep you feeling your best. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Dagger Law has more than 110 years of experience in nearly every aspect of the law. When we're not just helping clients, we're helping the community. You'll see us at festivals, sporting events, and around town, because we live and work here too. We are your neighbors, and we want to help you when you need it. When we help each other, we're stronger. Our community is stronger. Creating a strong, vibrant, healthy, and safe community is everyone's responsibility, and we take the responsibility seriously. We are local, we are trusted, we are experienced. Swing into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. If you're looking for the best selection of clean, quality used vehicles, look no further than the Carriage Company. You'll feel secure with your purchase, knowing all vehicles undergo an extensive safety and service check prior to the sale. And all vehicles can be viewed online at carriagecompany.com. The Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. So wait! Hi, I'm Carol Whittington, and I would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, located at 1540 Hubbard Drive in Lancaster. We are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio and Hawking Hills area since 2003. Graduations with a personal touch, weddings with a personal touch, corporate events with a personal touch. Please call us today for all your party rental needs, 740-689-6991. I really like Fearful County because we're just a great mix. We're not so isolated that we don't have resources, but we're also small enough that it's a real community. And I will say that I don't think I've ever seen or worked in a place where so many partners in the community come together and are truly collaborative. I've been working in Fairfield County for over 20 years and I've had a variety of positions within the county. Um, being a smaller county, um, I've been able to get to know the service 
agencies that are and people that work within that. Um, so I've always had those opportunities to be creative, to think out of the box. And through those collaborations, we've been able to really build some wonderful programming for the youth and families. I think that everybody is really community minded and they're really focused on within the system of mental health care, they're really focused on getting people access to the care that they need and making sure that we're serving the people in Fairfield County. Community, connections, collaboration. The Fairfield County Way. Central Ohio, home to thousands of businesses, large and small, each with owners and employees working hard to make their businesses work. We are the Savings Bank, and we are here for your business. When you call, we answer. When you email, we reply. And when you need a business loan, we get moving. Because in a market of thousands, we keep our eyes on your business. The Savings Bank.
IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. Beautiful shot here over Burn Union High School. It's a week 11 matchup. We're at halftime. Bur uh, the uh, Fairfield Christian Academy Knights had an outstanding first half, scored every time they touched the football. They lead it 41 to 24. You heard that right. We have not started the third quarter yet, and it's 41 to 24 Knights over the Tartans. And guess what? The Knights get the ball to start the second half. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> yeah, we just heard dancing in the moonlight, and that's kind of what they've been doing here tonight. Yeah. How about that? I mean, they, they are so in tune with things down here in Sugar Grove, yeah. playing the uh, the tunes, the sound. I, we, we mentioned the field, how awesome it looks. Uh, but, but the sound system is great. The lights are bright on the field. They, they, they've got it going on down here in the Grove. Yep, it's uh, it's outstanding. And the Knights are definitely appreciative of being, being able to play this, uh, this game here, this Region 27 playoff game down here in Sugar Grove. And they will get the ball to start the second half, leading Scioteville East 41-24. If you're just tuning in, that first half uh, looked like it started out like it was going to be a shootout. I mean, and, and really it kind of looked like FCA could not stop Scioteville East running game. But then one turnover turned into two turnovers, turned into a stalled drive. Next thing you know, FCA is up by three scores. Yeah, it swung the momentum totally into the Knights' favor. Yeah. And they took advantage of it, too. Got to give them credit. Let's go down to Marion for his thoughts on the first half and, and the upcoming second half. Yeah. Sorry, guys, Watch, <laughs> watching <laughs> the play six, here. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I, you know, I thought the first half, obviously, uh, you know, after those first couple drives, you know, Fairfield Christian did an amazing job. Got a chance to talk to Coach Pardon before, um, he, you know, the second half started. He mm -hmm. said that, you know, while he, they wish, he wished that they didn't have 24 points on the board, uh, Scioteville, that is, uh, he said, you know, he, he wanted – recognized that they're, they're big, they're physical, wanted to get them out of those running sets. Uh, but he said that he really liked the pace that they played with in the first half. Said he wants to keep that up said that he knows that Scioteville is challenged trying to run with them, and they want to keep up that fast pace. So the Knights start the second half on offense. It'll be well shot of the shotgun again with Danny Blair to his right. Here's Blair taking the handoff, and he's going to be wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage at the 35-yard line. Shu, you and I talked uh, when we were walking down uh, at halftime to go to the production truck uh, about the first half and how Rusty Hutchinson had a fantastic first half, scored five touchdowns, and you made the point Danny Blair could have five in the second half. He's well, that good. Yeah, he is that good, and he's had a great season, and I'm, I'm sure you know he's had a good game tonight. Yeah. It's just Rusty's been just phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. See what the Knights do here on second down and 12. Slowing it down a little bit more here in this second half to start. Pitch out comes. That is not well shit quarterback right now. That was number 22 for the Knights, Parker Couch. The gain goes for about seven, make it a third down and five for the Knights. So Parker Couch in at quarterback for FCA. Was that Jimmy Schmitz on the carry there? I think it was Blair. Okay. I'm look. I'm trying to find Gabe Welsh. I don't even see him on the sideline. Oh, there, yeah, he is down there. So Couch with Blair to his right. Roland looking to pass. Completed. Across the 50, the 40. Down inside the 40 to about the 36-yard line. Pass was complete this time to number 12, Braden Stem. 
Is uh, Gabe, Gabe soaking his arm down there? <laughs> Probably too tired from throwing all those long yeah. passes. Hey, guys, I, I saw Gabe Welsh uh, warming up before the first half, um, so I, I don't think it's a physical issue. Just, you know, may just be something that Coach Pardon wants to, you know, get another quarterback a look here, but uh, doesn't seem to be anything physically. And we also see Braden Stem playing offense, which he doesn't usually do unless it's a backup role. He's primarily a defensive player. So maybe just Coach Pardon getting some guys some time here, some reps, playoff reps, because you never know when, they, when you're going to need them. Uh, if one guy goes down, you got to get a guy step up. Here's a handoff right up the middle to Blair. That's going to go for about six yards. But like we said, they're not one-dimensional. No, not at all. No, they like having a balanced, you know, offensive attack, and, and they have that, and you, you're seeing it now. Yeah. Second down and five upcoming for the Knights. First drive of the second half, leading at 41-24. See a look there at Couch, Blair, and Stem looking over at the coaches for the play. Couch sends Stem in motion as the snap goes through the legs on the ground of Couch, and it's all the way back near the 50-yard line. There's not a lot he could do for that. No. Now we see Welsh coming in as well as Nate Hampton. And Stem and Couch come out. <clears throat> So on third down and long, no receivers, or rather uh, no running backs in the backfield with Welsh. She'll send four guys out to the right, one down to the bottom, the near side. That's Rusty. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, he is one-on-one. -on -one. Look who they got covering him out here. How can you blame him? Put your fastest guy on their fastest guy. Absolutely. Norris McKinley one-on-one, -on -one, but he's going to go the opposite direction and just overthrew his intended receiver. I believe that's T.J. Blair. They had two again open right in the middle of the field. Yeah, guys, Sayotaville East went with a, a zero blitz there, they, and they were very fortunate that wasn't converted by the Knights. So for the first time tonight, East stops Fairfield Christian, and they will be forced to punt. They have scored on every possession except for this one. Yeah, that, that's been a bad four-letter word in their offense, punt. Yeah. Saw that replay there, number 12 doing a good job of avoiding the uh, already downed quarterback, and he jumped over him on the punt. Pretty good punt, gets all the way down inside the 20, and that's where Sidoville will go on offense. Yeah, that was Dylan Fitzgerald that you saw in the replay. He's athletic. Well, there's a stop, something they did not have mm -hmm. the first half. See what they can do with it here on offense. First to 10 for the Tartans at their own 20-yard line, trailing 41-24. Yeah, you, you got to stick to your game plan, though, and what you do best, and that is they run the football. Here's McKinley taking the handoff, following his blockers. McKinley trying to get in the open, and he's going to be dragged backwards. He got out to about the 25. Actually, they're going to say the 24. Nope, now he's walking to the 25. <laughs> You know, that's, you know, and, and we've talked about this all season between Marion, yourself, and, and, and me. We've, we've talked about physicality. Yeah. And, and, you know, we haven't seen a lot of that tonight. Well, you, you, if you want to win and you want to move on, you've got to show some physicality, yep. especially from the <clears throat> defensive side of football. This time on the carry, going the opposite direction. Is that – Justice, I think it was. Cameron Justice, number 25, and lost yardage. I mean, I, I realize all the scheming and all those things, that, that's all important and whatever, but you kind of got to not be real happy playing defense right now. And I'm sure he challenged him. You know, he mentioned tomorrow on at halftime, Coach Barton did, and we're seeing a little bit more fight here yeah. right now in this drive already. Here's McKinley. McKinley with a good run. McKinley's still on his feet. He's got the first down to the 35-yard line. McKinley on carry. Shoots on the tackle. 
He's a tough runner. He is. <clears throat> he's not just fast. He, he, he's good. So first and 10 for Siderville East. Bunch of men real tight here. This almost looks like a goal line yeah, it's offense. That, it's that double wing. But it picks up some yardage across the 40. And forward progress will get him out to the 41-yard line, make it second down and four. Justice again on the carry for the Tartans. Yeah, they bring one of their wings in motion, Jared, especially when they run to the right, and that just adds an extra blocker there. And they're, they're really physical coming off the ball on the offensive line. Here's the wishbone look now this time. Ooh, a little bit of flinch in the backfield. They, no flag. This time it's going to go to Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald just dragging people with him. And he's got the first down, I believe. But we saw this in the first half. This is what they do best. You know, whether it takes up the time or not, you got to play however you play. Yeah. And you got to do it better. And I'm telling you, the way, as hard as they run, with the talent of McKinley in the backfield, you know, you could score on a given play. Mm-hmm. So another first down for the Tartans. <clears throat> I think the Knights just have to come up and be, like I said, more assertive, more aggressive. And, and now they've got 10 in the box there. Here's McKinley. McKinley across the 50. And goes out of bounds. Looks like right about the 47, 48 yard line. Yeah, they didn't consider him out. The clock's still running. Okay. He's up a second down and three for Scioteville East. I mean, it is what they do best. The, the only drawback is, is the clock eventually becomes right. the yeah. enemy, you know. But you can't just, you know, conjure up things on the game night that, that you haven't done. Double handoff, and they lost the football again. Just not good exchanges there. It went to McKinley, and then it was intended for, for Justice. Fortunately for the Tartans, they were able to get on it. The quarterback, Houston, fell on it, but that's a big loss. Yeah, one third and ten. Yeah, they've had some success with that inside handoff, but it wasn't clean. And I tell you, the Knights darn near got him. I mean, they almost, that almost looked like a hot potato. Get yeah. it, you know, like, get it away. It wasn't crisp handoffs. It was more like pitches. And on that second one, Justice just had trouble handling yeah. it from McKinley. Third down and ten for Scioteville East. Here is McKinley. McKinley across the 50. He's got some room across the 40. McKinley still on his feet all the way down near the 30-yard line. Boy, they give him that wishbone look, and they just have that extra blocker. And they just do a great job of giving him space, and he's so good that he reads it and gets through the hole, Jared. Watch right here on the replay. Fake inside, and look at that. Good cutback. Oh, yeah. And look at the blocking downfield. 54. Yeah. That's Brighton Lennox, the junior. He did a really good job blocking downfield for his running back. Yeah, they execute that really well. And here they come again with that wishbone look. It means a fullback and two halfbacks right behind the quarterback. This time it's Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald breaks one tackle, then runs over guys. He's across the 25 and has another first down. This is looking more like their first and second drives of the of the game. Yeah, I mean Dylan's listed at 2:30, and it shows. Yep. I mean he's dragging he's dragging tacklers. But as you said, at some point, I mean the clock's going to become their enemy, and yeah. then they have to be able to stop FCA, which they did in the first possession of this half. Well, that's it. That's a positive sign, you know, that they had scored every possession up to that point. First and ten here for the Tartans. Here's Justice up near the 20. Shorter gain this time. We'll give him three. <clears throat> Clock rolls down near three and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Just the first possession of the second half so far for the Tartans. So as you see, not a, not a quick scoring offense. <clears throat> McKinley 
Dancing his way up inside the 20, short of the first down. You're looking for a third down right here. Yeah, the Knights sent extra people that time and, you know, ha had a chance there of, of catching him a little sooner, but McKinley's quick getting through that, that small hole that's there. I mean, I, if I'm guessing, you know, it's going to be McKinley again. The wishbone look. He's the right halfback here, Jared. There is McKinley following his blockers. He's got the first down inside the 15-yard line. Or no, maybe not to the. Yeah, he gets down to about the 13 first down for the Tartans. McKinley on carry. Good enough for the Tartans. First down. But the clock continues to roll. It's two and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. This time, right up the middle. <laughs> is that Justice? It's, or yeah, is that Fitzgerald? I think it's a Man, fullback he was, Fitzgerald. He was <laughs> running hard. And like I said, he's 230 at a fullback. I mean, that's that's a load. And he, he has a high energy. He yes, high, he does. He has a high button there to push. Second and six, or right about five or six for the Tartans. Here's McKinley cutting it back inside. Really good read there. Really good cut. He has really good vision. Gonna bring up a third and one. Harper on the tackle. Big hit here at the end. Ooh, that's a big hit. Third down one. To bring him down inside the five. Third down and one here. This is probably Fitzgerald or Justice territory right here. Right up the middle, first man through. I believe that was Justice. It's close. What do you think, Mario? I mean, it is really close. I'm sorry, say again, Jared? I said it looks really close, but they are waving it forward for a first down. Yeah, I, it, uh, you know, it's just they're they're just moving that pile again. It's a lot of what we talked about in the first half, just that physicality of you know that inner you know guard tackle you know to center in between you know the the A gap and the B cap, just the you know the Tartans are really just controlling the line there. First and goal from the two. Justice runs it in for the touchdown. Tell you what, they they kind of just shoved it down right right down their throat. Yeah, they did. They came out and looked like they did in the first quarter. So they trail it now, 41 to 30, just 48.7 seconds to play in the third quarter. Yeah, but the thing you want to do, and I, I, I give them credit, is they want to put a little pressure now. Yeah. FCA's got to play. Right. I mean, you know, you look at the clock, and all of a sudden it doesn't look so rosy. Right. So they will go for two. Here's McKinley, cuts it back inside, and he's got it easily. He is really good with that cutback he to is. the middle. And they run him from the right half back, and they run to the left side. Yeah. And they execute that play. They ran at it three or four times on that drive. Watch it right here. Oh, yeah, watch how he comes across. They cross the backs, and then he cuts back. He planted on that outside foot, that left foot, and just squares his you know, shoulders, and he, he's he's good. And got to give credit to Amani yeah. Brown and Brighton Lennox. Amani Brown is the tight end. He had his guy going outside, yep. while Lennox had his guy going inside. Created that nice big wedge for him. And, and no running backs, you know, going to be that good without good line play. Right. So with that score and two-point conversion, we're back to within a nine-point single-digit lead for FCA, 41 to 32. Yeah, and I know one of the first thing when I ask, I, I always like to ask coaches, you know, what, what do you consider the strength of your team? And the first thing, without any delay, Adam, Coach Bailey said, we can run the ball, and we've done it consistent all year. Mm. So there you see it. Yeah. That's a heck of a drive. Yep. Now he has to rely on his defense yes. to try to come up with another stop. They did, they did so in that first possession of this half for FCA. I tell you, you kind of got to gamble probably a little bit, Jared. Um, you got to kind of... Maybe mix up some blitzes, do some things, because they have not had a very successful back end of their defense night. Real quick check of some other scores. Uh, Lancaster and Westerville North, man, they're in a battle. 21-21 in the third quarter. 
It's uh, Eastern all over Burn Union, 48 to nothing down at East Shade River Stadium in Reedsville. Bloom Carroll all over Athens, 51 to seven at halftime <laughs> in that one. So the Tartans will kick it away. <clears throat> They've kicked short and even onside kicked all night tonight. And uh-oh, uh-oh. Rusty Hutchison down the far <laughs> sideline. Touchdown, FCA. Now that's smart, getting him up there. Six touchdowns for Rusty Hutchinson. He has caught four. <laughs> he ran one, and now he's got a kickoff return for yep. a touchdown. Wow. I, I think IVP should produce a, a, a show called The Rusty Hutchison Show. <laughs> what do you think? Wow. I think we are tonight. Yeah. 50-yard <laughs> kickoff return. I would love to see his all-purpose yards tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Beth Competti, I don't know if you're watching this. Your hand would be tired tonight, writing down all these stats, typing them up. And test her math skills, yeah. that's for sure. Hutchison to kick the extra point. It is up and it is, oh, hit off the upright and no good. So 47-32 with 42 seconds to play in the third quarter. Russ is slipping. He's slipping now, right? He <laughs> missed tired. Him. Yeah, he did something, you know, not worked out for him tonight. <laughs> So here comes Rusty over to the sideline. He wanted to take a break, but hey, he's got to kick off now. <clears throat> well, you know, we've talked about it before. When you play at this level, you know, you, you if you like to play, you go get a play because the, the rosters are not huge. Right. You know, usually 20 or a little more, hopefully. Uh, we've seen some even smaller, but yeah. you get an opportunity <clears throat> to play. Looks like about 22 total for FCA. Yeah. And maybe right about that same amount over on the far side, maybe a couple less for Sayreville East. Hey, since the scoreboard has been clicking again here in the uh, third quarter, let's say, uh, give a little shout out to Buckeye Lake Marina. They're our second half scoreboard sponsor. If you're looking for a new boat, a great pre-owned watercraft, or a place to get parts for your boat, Buckeye Lake Marina has it all. More information can be found at BuckeyeLakeMarina.com. <laughs> So Hutchison to kick it away now, leading 47 to 32. <clears throat> Kicks it to the near side. Look at that, it almost <laughs> checked up at the one yard. <laughs> I, Marianne, I, I, I'm with you. If that would have checked up at the one, I'm going home with you. We'd I have mean, to send Marianne. We're, we're out of here. Get an Uber for Marianne. <laughs> That was a really good kick. <laughs> oh, well, here we go. They controlled, you know, <clears throat> East controlled the ball the whole quarter. Yeah, they did. And they're, they're up by a point in the quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Big plays. They need to, uh, they did a nice job on their last drive. It just took a lot of time. It they're going to need one of those 60, 70 yard runs yeah. here from McKinley pretty soon. Here is McKinley, and he's going to get out across the 20 to about the 23, 24-yard line. <clears throat> Shorter game than I thought on that play. Second and seven. This time it's Fitzgerald out to about the 30, close to a first down. I tell you, Shu, th this FCA team has already had a game this year where Danny Blair got into the OHSA record books with an over 400-yard rushing game. Uh, and, and there are several FCA. Uh, um, ben Tobin has been on. He's on the uh, uh, in the rushing records for FCA for the in the state uh, for FCA. I have to think that Rusty Hutchison is is getting close to where he's going to be in the record books for scores. Well, for we've got a quarter to go, so yeah, you know, he may make another impact here. Yeah, I mean it's uh, you know he's that good and in, in the right spots. <clears throat> 
So that's the end of the third quarter with the Knights up 47 to 32. Sayoteville East with the football. And they've got some work to do and not a lot of time to do it. Looking at some uh, updated scores. Actually, not much updated. At Lancaster and Westville North still knotted up at 21 in the third quarter. Try to. Yeah, and for some of those of you that are a little older like myself, you remember the coach at Westville North is Stanley Jackson, former That's OSU right. quarterback. Yeah. Having some French fries down on the sideline, and I can attest those are uh, <laughs> pretty good. I mean, they're, they're more than pretty good. <laughs> River leads uh, Rosecrans 49 to 14 in the third quarter. That River Pilots team, we saw them. Was that uh, two years ago? Yeah, I guess down here at Burn. Burn Union. Yep, they were fantastic. And that's who the winner of this game will will play most likely if they hold on and beat. Rosecrans, I say hold on, they're up 49-14. No, Coach Flannery has, has good program and good teams. It'll it'll be an interesting match next week. Could be right back here. That's true. Second down and five. This time over the right side. Justice on the carry. There's justice on the carry. Short of the first down. Third down and one upcoming. <clears throat> yeah, every, every time they can make them run another down, it's good for yeah. FCA. Because that takes another 25 seconds probably off the clock. <clears throat> yeah, they have not shown tonight that they can pass the football. No. I'm not sure. Uh-oh, he might get – oh. I thought if he would have cut outside, if he could have gotten out to the outside, he might have had daylight, but he cut it back inside. He does get the first down, but the clock continues to roll. I don't believe they've com completed a single pass tonight. They've attempted a few. Yeah, there in the second quarter, tried a little bit, but that's really not their forte. But they are, you, you can still run the ball, Jared, but you have to get a little more tempo here. Yeah, here's Fitzgerald on the carry. Fitzgerald across the 40, still going and down to the 30-yard line. Good run by Mr. Fitzgerald, Dylan Fitzgerald, the 5'9", 227-pound senior. It's like a Brahma bull when he gets going, buddy. These three running backs with Justice, Fitzgerald, and McKinley, all seniors. And they are good ones. What is it you like to say, Shoe? Bevy of backs, and they lost it this time, and FCA recovers. Third, the turnover. third turnover tonight. There you go. That will doom you in any offense. Yeah. Watch right here on the replay. In the wishbone. Get the ball to justice. Boy, that one was really stripped out of there. Yes. So the Knights take over, leading 47-32 with 10-21 to play in the ball game. <clears throat> Welsh, was that caught on a bounce? Yeah. Yes, it was. Hutchinson caught it. He got a little pressure, so he had to get rid of it a little quicker, and he didn't make an accurate throw. So second and ten. Brings up second down ten. I mean, it really, if, if you're East, you have no choice here. You've got to put some – I know they spread you out, but you just have to go, go get them. Yeah. If they make a big play, they're going to make it anyway. <laughs> You got to gamble here if you want to steal it. There they come. Welsh pitches it out to Blair. Yep. Blair. Good run. They slam down at the 34 yard line. Right about the sticks where he needs to get to. FCA fans not happy with the uh, the tackle. I don't know. Let's see here. I, I really didn't see anything wrong. Yeah, I didn't either. I mean. 
Nah, he's still in bounds. He's still got him. Yeah, yeah. That, that's just that's. He just started the, the tackle, the sling, when he was still in bounds. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing there. No. I think if the FCA fans had a replay on a video board, they'd see that it was not a dirty play. So you're willing <laughs> to help Danny Snively get a video <laughs> board now. Okay. He's got a lot of plans down here. He you does. never know. Well, that's big. Boy, that's right a busted there. play there. Yeah. Something was not right as well. She took the snap looking to hand off, I think. Just did not look right. Marion, what did you see on that one? It just did Something was messed up from the start. I don't think Marion can hear me down there. Big loss on the play. Second down and 18 coming up for the Knights. <clears throat> Welsh with Blair to his left. Looking to pass. He's got pressure. All over him and sacked again inside the 20 yard line, and a flag comes in. But that's what I'm talking about. Is that a about, face Jim? mask or a, or a hold? Horse collar tackle, number 77 on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Boy, you don't usually see that in such a down. motionless area. Watch here. Seven, seven. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we, it's hard it's, to it's tell. A, yeah, from our angle and and how close, but officials right there. Yeah, they will still have second down, and Coach Bailey is over. He's he's not very happy about something. He's over on the field. He asked the far official a question, so the official calls the timeout. I think he wants an explanation. So they're having a conversation. Yeah, I'm not sure he agrees with the call. He's probably saying he had a hold of his shoulder pad. It's hard to tell. Yeah. We, we really did not have a good look No, at we that. didn't. It's a huge penalty, though. Yeah, it's not an automatic first down. Second down and two. How did they get so many yards on that penalty? Passes batted away and incomplete. That's That was more than 15 yards, wasn't it? It appeared to me it was. I mean, because the sack happened back inside the 20. They brought the ball all the way out to the 42, a 22-yard Penalty? They must have marked it from where? I'm not sure. The original line? Maybe that's what Coach Bailey was mad about. Okay. Did they take it from the previous spot? I, I thought there was a spot foul from. Now we have a confusion on what down it is. Well, you said second. The down marker had third. The officials are going to come together and get it right here. I think it's accurate that it's fourth down. Okay, it is fourth down. Yeah. So fourth down and two for the Knights. And they have a lot of confusion here what they're going to do. I think, are they bringing in the punt team? I think they are. I think you about have to, don't you? Yeah. And there's nine minutes to go with a running clock right now. Blair's punt. Good high punt. Nobody back to receive it. So they will let it bounce and roll as far as they can. Goes inside the 30 and will be down right about the 
seven yard line. Interesting uh, set of downs right there, Marion. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure, you know, what happened on the markage of the of the penalty. Are you do, you, do you have any insight on that, Marion? Yeah, guys, uh, sorry about that. I'm having a tr little trouble hearing you down here. I really don't know. It seemed that um, they may have counted the down after the horse collar and didn't replay the down. So mm. I, I, that, it's a very strange thing. I, I don't know what the official rules are, but uh, obviously the uh, Fairfield Christian crowd here was not happy yeah. with that. Good run here on first down, but it's there's a penalty. False start, it looks like, on the Tartans. Might have been uh, illegal alignment. Okay. Because usually if it's procedure, they, stop, they it. stop the play. So Illegal formation yeah. on the offense. Oh, Not sorry. enough men in the, in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So it brings up a first down and 15 here for... East, Tartans will hand it off to McKinley Norris, or Norris McKinley rather, and gets up near the original line of scrimmage, the 30 yard line. Forty-seven, thirty-two is the score, FCA on top of East. Eight, 17 and counting here in the ball game. First down run here for the Tartans gets him out across the 40-yard line. Well, I mean, every time you get a first down, you know, the clock's going to stop until the chains get moved. So, you know, you, but they got to increase the tempo. Yeah, because they need two scores, which exactly. means they also need at least one stop. Yes. Defensively. Or an onside kick probably sure. at this point. Which they've done that pretty much all night, but have not had success with it. And the last one was returned for a touchdown. <laughs> Here's McKinley. Up near the 50-yard line. Pick up about five or six on the play. <clears throat> Call it second down and five. Here you go, trying to get a little tempo. This time it's Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald across the 50, across the 40, and finally slung down at the 34-yard line of FCA. He's had a big game also. Yeah, he has. TJ Blair on the stop for the Knights. Got a high motor, man. <laughs> They're coming up a little quicker now, are the Tartans. Here's McKinley. McKinley trying to get outside and drag down near the 25. Close to another first down. They'll be short by about a yard. Good job by Danny Blair getting him down there on the sideline. Right up the middle again. They've got the first down. The clock will continue to roll as they get inside the 25-yard line to the 24. But the clock rolls. 6.40 to play in the ball game. Here we go, double wings. And Coach Parton is going to call a timeout for FCA. I like that timeout, Jared. Yeah, good timeout. They've been uh, driving down the field. Guys might need a little breather here. I was just thinking. Regroup a little bit. There's some players out there that have to be tired at oh, this absolutely. point. Oh, absolutely. Both sides. That's what I mean. Yeah. Lancaster has taken a lead on Westerville North, 28 to 21 in the third quarter. Bloom Carroll all over Athens, 58 to seven in the third quarter. It is Eastern over Burn Union. That's a final now, 48 to nothing. So the number one seed Eastern Eagles will move on. Look down here at some other scores in the area. West Jeff leads Grove City Christian, 45-14. 
It is West Muskingum. A little tighter ball game now. 35-26 against Union Local in the fourth quarter. Pick North all over Westerville Central, 28 to nothing. Sheridan leads Morgan, 42 to 20 in the fourth quarter. It's River over Bishop Rosecrans, 49-21. Waterford leads Miller, 14 nothing. Hillier Bradley over Newark, 42 to nothing. Get you some more here in a little bit. First and 10 for the Tartans. They trail at 47 to 32. With 626 to play in the ballgame. Here's a pitch out to McKinley. McKinley looking for a block. He's got it from his big right tackle. And he's going to get all the way down inside the 10 yard line. Good job McKinley on the run following the block of Hayden Conkle. Yeah. Good job of getting out of bounds, too. Stops the clock. Tell you what, Conkle, watch him here. He's got some speed for a big guy. Oh, he's a he did a really he, nice job out there. Yeah, he has good agility. Didn't hold. Now you get him on a defensive back, good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First and goal from inside the 10. Here's Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald gets inside the five. And a big pile up right there. It's still moving forward. And Fitzgerald is over the goal line. Touchdown, Tartans. There you go. You got six minutes to go. And if you can get two points here, you're in the game. Yeah. With six minutes to go and you've had three turnovers, I mean, you got to be happy about that. If you get the two-point conversion, you're only down by seven. Yes. And still 6.06 on the clock. Key is you got to get the two. Yes. And you got to get a stop on defense. But at least you've put the pressure on the other team to, right. to execute. When you're behind, that's all you want to do is have a chance, Jared. Yep. That wishbone formation has been a lot more successful for it them this half than the wing. Houston turns, pitches it out to McKinley. McKinley following his blockers. He's got the two-point conversion easily. We've got a game, 47 to 40, 606 to play in the game. Now, like you said, the pressure is on FCA to do something with their offensive possession. They're going to have to execute a possession. So 6.06 to play. And again, if I'm at East, I'm going to gamble a little bit. I'm coming after you. I'm going to send some extra people. If you make a big play, you make a big play. Right. We'll say congratulations. But I'm going to come and make you determine how, the, how we're going to play. And they have brought more pressure on Welsh this half. I, I, I mean, he's been that. under pressure every snap. I know it's gambling, and you're like rolling the dice a little bit. But, but you know what? You're down a touchdown with six minutes to go. You've got it. You've got to take your shot now. Yeah. Marion, I don't know if you're able to hear us now, but uh, tell you what, this one just just uh, turned into a game, didn't it? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. It, it, it really has become a game, you know, and it's, it's one of those things. If you're Fairfield Christian, I know you've had a lot of success throwing the football, and Rusty Hutchison has been an absolute beast tonight, but it's got to be something where you, you got to look to maybe take some time off the clock, find a way to eat this clock down, to not to basically allow it to run out on Scioteville East because the clock is your friend right now. Yep. And every incomplete pass that you have, you're playing with fire because you're giving them more time. Again, as you said, they're only down one score now. We've got ourselves a football game. We'll see how they respond on offense. That's a really good point about incomplete passes stopping the clock. Absolutely. Now, I will say they haven't had a whole lot of incompletes tonight. No, but you, you know what? I, 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 they can run the ball. They Absolutely. are They are not, you know, one Danny dimension. Blair. Yeah, we've talked about that. But with all the pressure that's going to come, you may have to use those little screen passes or things to get them in space. Right, and it does look like the Tartans are angling for another onside kick. Rusty Hutchison, remember, returned the last one exactly 50 yards for a touchdown. So it is Hayden Conkle to kick it again. This time he... Kicks it a little higher, and it goes out of bounds right about the 22-yard line. Yeah, that's not exactly what you wanted to do there. Now, they've had success on, on their the two-point conversions. Will be placed at the 35-yard line. It will be first down. But on their kickoffs, well, they have really hurt themselves on the kickoffs. And it just goes to show, I mean, nothing against Conkle. He's doing a lot tonight on the offensive and defensive lines. But asking him to kick is another story. It just goes to show what a weapon a kicker is in we, high school football. We've seen that so many times. 
First and 10 for the Knights. Good field position, pretty good field position at the 35-yard line after the kick out of bounds. Welsh pitches it out to Danny Blair. Danny Blair with a lot of speed. Blair to the 35-40, still on his feet across midfield. Did he stay in bounds? No, they're going to mark him out. At about the 46, 47-yard line. Yeah, I, I like that call. Just get it to him quick. Use his talent. Let him use his talent right here. Yeah, it looks like he stepped out right about the 50. They've got him marked at the 47. But the clock has stopped at 559. FCA in Tartan territory. Welsh looking to pass, and it's incomplete. Stops there you the go. clock. Yep. That was intended for Chris Hutchinson. A little bit of a lower pass. No, check that. It's TJ Blair, number zero. I thought it was a number one. Numbers are very hard to see. The dark gray with dark blue numbers, but you don't see too many Welsh passes like that. No. Not tonight, anyway. Second and 10 for the Knights. T.J. Blair in motion. Welsh will keep it himself, and he goes out of bounds. Dive, oh, they're going to say he stayed in bounds when he got down. So they will wind the clock. It's going to bring up a third down, big third down right here defensively for the Tartans. It is. This could be the play of the game right here. You see the numbers on the scoreboard. Third and six at the Tartan 40 three-yard line. Clock rolls at 529 to play in the ball game. FCA leads it by seven. Welsh sends TJ Blair in motion. He'll take the handoff. Blair up to the 40, and he's got the first down. Big play by TJ Blair. Yep. The sophomore brother of Danny Blair. Like we said, he's had a really good last half of the season, TJ has. Guys, that's a really great call there. You allow uh, Blair to use his speed. You know, as you come in with the jet motion, he gets it on the run. But yet, you know, it's not a, a point where he might get run out of bounds or anything like that, able to still get upfield and get a first down. That was huge. Good look right there at TJ. First and 10 for the Knights. Well, just going to let it wind down until he sees that back judge hand go up. Here's a pitch out to Danny Blair. Blair just runs right past defenders. Blair, he's on a foot race. It's a touchdown, Knights. Danny Blair. That, my friends, is talent. From 38 yards out, a touchdown. A 37-yard touchdown run for Danny Blair. That's such good play calling, just getting him the ball so quick. Watch you. Three guys had a chance to get him, but he just ran right There's past There's a second him. cut. And whoops. Wow. There you go. Rusty Hutchinson to do the extra point kicking out of the hold of Jimmy Schmitz. It is up and it is good this time. So with 4.31 to play in the ball game, 54 to 40, FCA. And what a big play. Probably right now the play of the game, TJ Blair yes. on the third down conversion. Yeah, huge play. Watch the replay. Look, I mean, it looks like they could have had him in the backfield. This guy's within three yards of him. And just runs right past him. Yeah, and you know what? I will say this. That's the first time. TJ had a good block, too, to spring his brother. But East looked tired. Yeah, right you're there. right. You're right. That's the first time. I, I, I'm not taking anything away from Danny because he is really good. Make three great cuts. But the East team looked fatigued. Yep. And, and, and you got to be. They're dancing in the stands here tonight, Marion. Yeah, guys, I, I, I would just reiterate, 
Danny, Danny Blair has a distinct running style. Chu, I think you coined it last game when we covered him against Fisher Catholic. Looks like he shot out of a cannon. Yep. <laughs> I had a head coach in high school that had another way that he described it. He blows stuff up, and I'm cleaning that up for television. You know, he just straight ahead, just, I mean, just absolute aggressive running style. Makes it really hard to tackle when he gets ahead of, ahead of steam. He's an excellent player. Rusty Hutchinson to kick it off. Angles it to the far side. Trouble handling it is Justice. And Justice now getting out to just shy of the 20-yard line. They've got some work to do here. Four and a half minutes to play in the ball game, down 54 to 40. And not a quick scoring offense. No, not Unless at all. you get McKinley <laughs> outside. Get him loose. Which we have seen one big play from them tonight. It was a 60-yard touchdown run by Norris McKinley. Well, I'm anxious to see what formation they use. Uh, they, they used a little bit of spread, just a very little, but they've been really successful with the wishbone. Unfortunately, that doesn't get you big plays right, usually. Right. But here you go, Jared. Spreading got, them out this time. Got three wide. One guy in the backfield. And it is McKinley lining up a quarterback. He's going to tuck it and run, and not much there. I don't think he even got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, I tell you, if I'm on defense and I see him taking a snap, yeah, we're spying him. Yeah. Now, we may not be able to tackle him, but we're going to spy him and not let him get well, loose. Caleb Debra with another tackle. He's had a good game tonight defensively for this Knights team. McKinley hands it off. It's – is that <laughs> – that wasn't Justice this time. It was Fitzgerald. He has had a huge <laughs> game. He has. His, his games are 10 yards or more. First down for the Tartans. McKinley keeps it himself right up the middle. And he's still going. McKinley to the 40. It's a foot race. McKinley inside the 20, the 10, 5, touchdown Tartans. No flags. <laughs> we got a track meet here in Sugar Grove tonight. They don't even have the lines painted down yet, yeah, but it's a track meet. Fall track. <laughs> Let's see, Danny Snively did tell us they just got the track surfaced today. Wow, bouncing off contact. And once he turns it in, he has another gear. Yeah, he does. <laughs> so they will go for two. This is an important two-point conversion right here. They've been pretty successful tonight on the two-point conversions. We'll see what they do here. It will be McKinley again at quarterback. He hands it to Fitzgerald, and that's easy. It's like a stroll in the park. Like every single two-point conversion, just like, yeah. They just line up and... So 54-48 with 3.32 to play in the ball game. And again, we want to send a shout out to Danny Snively here at Burn Union. This is tough to do. I mean, look at this facilities. Oh, it's awesome setting tonight, too. But, but it's tough to, to host a playoff game when your team is playing on the road. Yeah. You've got guys everywhere. You've got people watching them and traveling with them. You've got a whole big crew here tonight, and they've done a fabulous job. And just look at this place. They just got the track surface today. Uh, they'll come back and get the lines painted on it when the weather warms up in the spring. But look at the building in the far, uh, back in the far there. That, that building is supposed to open up around Christmas break. They're going to move into that building, uh, take about a week early Christmas break and move into the building. Then the old building will be torn down. They're going to build a baseball field, turf baseball field where the old building sits. They've got they've, a lot to be proud of. They've got, yeah. a, they, they've got a field house uh, going in. Yeah, just uh, phenomenal things going on down here. So kudos to the folks uh, behind the scenes. Uh, not just Danny Snively, but uh, the administration, the school board. Just pretty impressive. It is. And we've got ourselves a game here with 3.32 to play in the game, 54-48. Put the pressure on them again. they got to execute. And Conkel will again get the onside kick, or kick the onside kick, that is. This one has a pretty good bounce to it. They got 
it. Yes. Scioteville East recovers the onside kick. They backed off. Wow. FCA just let it roll. Now they got on their heels, Jared, and, and they didn't want to touch it before the 10 yards, but you can't be on your heels. Unbelievable. Watch this this one where he's had some well, this not so good ones. This one was perfect. This is perfect. Look at the pace of the ball. Watch, watch the defender back at a block. He got blocked. Wow. Great execution. Here we go. And plenty of time right now with 3.29 on the clock. Wow. If you Christian. turned this one off uh, early, shame on you. Sorry, Marion. I was going to say, fearful Christian has to keep their composure here. I know they're frustrated from that last play, but they can't let it get to him on defense. Here's McKinley. McKinley still on his feet. He's being helped by his offensive lineman, Hayden Conkle, trying to pull him forward. He gets out near the 40. More importantly, Sam Workman limping around out there, that defensive line for FCA. They can't afford to have anybody go down. Second down and two upcoming for the Tartans. And they have all three timeouts left. That's right, they do. It's big. Here's Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. I think he's going to be stopped just shy Fitzgerald of the first down. Perry. Only needed to get two, and I think he's short by just a couple of inches. Look at that. Third That's down and inches. A two-eyed run again. Oh, is it third down? Or they... Yeah, it is. Just short. And Coach Bailey, did he call a timeout? You know that or he's he, waving to people in the stands. I wasn't I, sure what he was doing there. Maybe he's requesting a measurement. Yes, I think you're right. I think he is requesting a measurement. Or re, they're going to respot it and back it up. <laughs> so he requests a measurement. They just back the ball up a yard. All right, we'll answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Meanwhile, these FCA fans are livid about something over here. And McKinley, McKinley still on his feet. McKinley across the 10, five, touchdown Tartans. He would not go down. No, he. Norris McKinley. Wow, so while they had fans turned around yelling to start the clock, this kid's running for a touchdown to almost tie the game. They got to get an extra point here, the I mean, two he, point, but look at this run. Yeah, he's phenomenal. Wow. Here you go. There is Norris coming back onto the field. <laughs> you need oxygen over there, you know? <laughs> This is a big one, 54-54. Fitzgerald, and he stopped. This time he does not get the two-point conversion. We remain tied. There's actually a sniff of defense in tonight's game right there. <laughs> Every single two-point conversion to that point has been, like you said, a walk in the park. Yeah. That one, FCA stepped up. <laughs> What an unbelievable football game we have here. Keep in mind, they just recovered an onside kick. It was perfect. Can he do it again? Yeah, guys, I wonder if they actually even go for an onside kick here. You wonder what the strategy is. Do they just try to, you know, kick it deep so they don't give them such a short field? Again, you know, if you're Fairfield Christian, you got to feel confident with your chances to, you know, kick this down and score with just a little over two minutes left. Their quick strike offense and the speed that they have, I'm sure they're not fretting at all about trying to take it down there. They just have to execute. Man, this is uh, this one's going to go down in the history books for us, I think, as one of the best games <laughs> well, that we've ever broadcast. The best sure. offensive game that sure. we've seen yeah. ever, probably. Yeah. Yeah. We've had some great games. We're very fortunate. We've seen some unbelievable yes. plays. Yes. But offensively, we've seen nothing like this. No. 108 points. <laughs> Wow. Big plays on both sides. Heck, we're tired. We've not even been on the field. So, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hayden Conkle to kick it off. 
want to thank all of you who have joined us tonight live. You are seeing a good one. Don't go anywhere. It's tied up 54-54, 2.15 to play in the ball game. Conkle this time, this time it will not go 10 yards. It goes out of bounds at the 48. That's huge for FCA. But and if it gets down to push and shove down close, Illegal Rusty can kick a team. field goal. That's true. He, place where it went out of bounds. A couple of field goals this year. I believe um, when I look at things here, yeah, he's had two field goals. That's what I thought. So FCA with outstanding field position now. They will spot it at the 42-yard line of Scioteville East, first and 10. <laughs> Look at that scoreboard. 54-54, 2.15 to play. Welsh with Blair to his right. He sends Hutchinson in motion. And a whistle. And this is gonna be encroachment. Encroachment number 12 on the defense. I really First thought they were going to get Hutchinson for going forward a a after he went in motion. Yeah. It almost looked like uh, Canadian football. Yeah, it did. <laughs> but they called it on Dylan Fitzgerald over here on this, this end. You guys, Gabe Welsh is out of the game on this one. It's like a direct snap, possibly to Blair. Hutchinson in motion. It is a direct snap to Blair. Blair looking for blockers. Blair to the 30 and brought down right there. But it's a first down Knights. Clock continues to roll after they set the chains. We'll be inside of two minutes to play when this ball is snapped. Welsh still on the sidelines for FCA. They're going to be content for now to go Danny Blair out of the direct snap. So probably no secret here to what's coming. It'll be Blair straight ahead. Blair, wow, jumping over people. Blair inside the 20 and finally brought down at the 11-yard line. Hard run for Danny Blair. He's carried him this half. Scioteville East will call a timeout, and you are right. He is, uh, his back's going to be sore after this second half. <laughs> he has carried him. You know, we talked about that at halftime. This could be, and he's really showed up here. First half was the Rusty Hutchinson so show. Second yep. half, the Danny Blair show. It's kind of nice to have those choices. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get to our players of the game. I know there's still, <laughs> there's still a... An eternity to go, a minute 33, and who knows what could happen, but we'll get to our players of the game. Let's do the Scioteville East one first. Brought to you by Bay Food Market. Stop in at Bay's and check out their weekly gourmet burger and brat selection and shop their full-service fresh meat case. Bay Food Market at the corner of Walnut and Maple Streets in Lancaster since 1932. Honestly, I mean, they've had two backs that have had great games, but yeah. Norris McKinley by far has just stood out. I agree with that 100%. Number one, Norris McKinley, the senior running back, 5'9", 160 pounds. He's been outstanding for Scioteville East. So congratulations. He is our base food market, Scioteville East player of the game. We will get to the Fairfield Christian player of the game on the next stoppage of the clock. First and 10, Knights, they can get a first down. Looks like just inside the two yard line. Blair again out of the shotgun formation. He's got wide open touchdown. Nobody there. I'm wondering, did they let him score? Maybe. I mean, there was no yeah. resistance at all right there. No. What do no. you think? I mean, Marion, I don't know if you can hear me, but. Did it seem to you like they were look even trying? To, they're not even trying to tackle him. Yeah, guys, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear they just let him score on that one. I mean, that was, um, you know, with 1.30 left to go, you know, they get a couple long runs. Who knows for Sire of Yeah, Noah could have got his arc through that one. I mean, that was yeah. so big. I mean, That's that true. was wide. 
Extra point attempt by Hutchinson is up and good. And the Knights back up on top by seven, 61-54. But Scioteville East will have a chance. Let's get to our Fairfield Christian player of the game tonight, brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. You can learn more at carriagecompany.com. Hey, same thing. I mean, you have two players who are just tremendous and have great games. But yeah. How can you not reward Rusty Hutchinson mm -hmm. for six touchdowns yeah. in the first half? He had four through the air <laughs> receiving, one rushing, and one returning a kickoff 50 yards. Yeah, and that was his half. So, yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard not to raise him. But Danny Blair is, is dynamic. Yeah, he is. He, he's dynamic. But we want to say congratulations to number two, Rusty Hutchinson. He is our F Fairfield Christian player of the game, brought to you by the Carriage Company. There is Rusty right there, and he will line up to kick it off. Keep in mind, after even all six touchdowns for him, Danny's got, it, what, two or three, and he's kicked the extra point on all of them. I think he had one that hit the upright, and they went for two on one, but this guy does it all. He kicks extra points, he plays defense, kicks off. I think he even punts. They punted one time tonight. Kick will be taken. Oh, he fumbled it. It's loose. And he recovers. I believe that was Justice. Justice on recovery. Yeah, it was 25. Cameron Justice. I think he was thinking about running before he caught it. He, he knew he had some room there. It's kind of a shorter kick. And he just went right through his arms. Well, they've still got two timeouts with a minute 28 to go. There's a, co a look at Coach Adam Bailey. <laughs> and 77 yards to go in a minute 28. <laughs> looks pretty calm, though. I mean, I mean, at this point, what, you know, what yeah, do you do? Yeah. McKinley out of the shotgun, direct snap. Cuts back to the middle. Yeah, flag comes in. McKinley gets to the 30. And brought down at the 25-yard line, but poor progress stopped him at the 30, but this might come back for a hold. Holding. Offense number 78. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. You know, I, here's this is kind of funny, Shu. Uh, Danny Blair's dad, Josh Blair, texted me this evening just before you picked me up to come to the game. He said, what's your prediction, score prediction? I said 35-33 FCA. <laughs> Never in my life did I think it would be 61-54 <laughs> with a minute and 20 to go in the game. McKinley looking to pass. He's got pressure. Danny Blair sacks him inside the 10-yard line. And Scioteville takes a timeout. They're really backed up now inside the 10 with a minute and four to go in the game. Marion, he just did not see Danny Blair coming at all. This is an impressive game. Yeah, we gave, Marion, we gave our player of the game to Rusty Hutchinson, but Boy, Danny Blair, he's this second half, he's really turned it on in all phases, and that was a big defensive play for him right there. Yeah, he's yeah. a great player. Yeah, guys, he's he's been amazing. I mean, again, you, you, what he's done in the second half to put this game away, the trust that the coaches had to have in him to go direct snap after direct snap after direct snap to him on that game-winning drive, and then we see him there just come scot-free off the end and deliver a blow uh, to McKinley there uh, to make a huge play. Uh, again, just backs them up even further. Just athletes all around the field here for Fair Fairfield Christian. Been o overly impressed with what they've been able to do this game. Here we go, second down and a mile. McKinley back to pass. Looking down the near sideline and it is incomplete. It was out of bounds anyway. Intended receiver that time was actually the starting quarterback, Caden Houston. Kind of role reversal there for McKinley and Houston. Look here. He gave him an opportunity, Jared. Yep. That's all you can ask. He's out of bounds.
They got two downs to get 25 yards. That's how you have to look at it. You've got two timeouts, or one timeout. But if you get a first down, the clock will stop. He's got Fitzgerald standing to his right. McKinley back to pass, has pressure, fires one down the far side. Oh, tipped twice wow. by Keegan Barker, his tight end, and just could not haul it in. So it's going to bring up a fourth down and 25. This is the ball game right here for the Tartans. Watch this replay from Dagger Law. Again, tipped once. He had a chance. Tipped twice. Just could not bring it in. And we have a whistle, and now FCA will take a timeout to talk about their defense. Boy, this is not the only uh, good game going on right now. Up in uh, Westerville, it's tied up 28 to 28 in the fourth quarter between Westerville North and Lancaster. That uh, sounds like a good one up there. Sure the, the Gales knew going into that one, even though they're a, uh, you know, the underdog, they, have a, they had a chance in this one. I think they were 10th seed, is that yeah. correct? Bloom Carroll wins tonight, 58 to 14 over Athens. It was Reedsville Eastern over Burn Union, 48 to nothing. Uh, trying to get to that River and Rosecrans score. The winner of this game will move on to play the winner of that one. Scrolling through all kinds of different scores here. Hilliard Darby beats Groveport Madison 17-10. Harvest Prep really turned it on in the second half. They beat New Lex 55-8. Wow. West Muskingum beats Union Local 42-26. Sheridan wins 49-28 over Morgan. Pick North wins tonight. Jackson beats Marietta. River, it's a final now. River beats Rosecrans 49-21. And will it be FCA hosting River? We'll find out after this play possibly. Long pass down the near sideline, and it's incomplete, and FCA will take over on downs inside the 10-yard line. I think everybody on this side of the field just took a deep sigh. <laughs> Catch your breath. Here's the replay. It was intended for number 32. That's Imar Imani Brown. Yeah, Rusty Hutchinson played that ball well yep. as a defender. And that was a big mismatch. Brown is six foot two. Hutchinson is five foot five. So now FCA can go into victory formation. And they will kneel on it. And it will be one more kneel, and they will win this football game. Clock down inside of 25 seconds. Waiting as long as they can. And they will kneel on it. And the Fairfield Christian Knights in an exciting one tonight. They win it 61 to 54 over the Scioteville East Tartans. You know, if you've been paying attention watching the game, I mean, there's really not a lot we can add, honestly, Jared, to this. Just an amazing show of offense oh, yeah. and ability to score. Yeah, just a fantastic offensive performance by a lot of what are going to be really tired high school athletes <laughs> after this one. Rusty Hutchinson had a big game. Gabe Welsh passing ball, big game. Danny Blair, huge game. On the other side, I mean, all three running backs for Scioteville East were fantastic. If you like offense, boy, you've got your money's worth tonight. I know that, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk and even complaining about the, the ticket prices raising uh, by OHSAA for the playoffs. They definitely got their money's worth with this one tonight. Yeah, this is a, um, a very, very good first-round game. Yeah. Sometimes you see them a little unbalanced and maybe not as competitive, but tonight went down to the last minute. Yes, it did. <laughs> Marion is uh, down on the field. He's trying to get uh, Coach Pardon to have some final words with him. 
And uh, as he tracks him down, look at he's chasing him. He's chasing him. But I think Coach Parton is going to go talk to his team briefly. Hopefully it's briefly so he can get a, get over and talk to uh, Marion about this one. But, uh, Shu, I, I tell you, it doesn't get easier for FCA next week when they take on the River Pilots. We right. have seen that team right here on this field, and they're fantastic nope. as well. Coach Flannery, like I said, has a great program there. They're physical. They're usually big, and, and they do things really well. Um, but looking from Coach Parton's standpoint, Last year, they got the first ever playoff win, and I think that experience helped a little bit tonight. They didn't panic. They got yeah. behind early, didn't panic, got tied late, didn't panic, got the ball to the people they're supposed to, and they end up winning the ball game. And that's all you try to do is advance. Speaking of advanced shoes, sound looks like heartbreak up in Westerville as uh, Westerville North Wildcats win that one by a field goal, 31 to 28 wow. over the Lancaster Golden Gales tonight. That's tough. That's a tough way to lose. Yeah. But, uh, boy, they, they gave it everything they had. Did the Gales? Check out some other scores as we wait for Coach Pardon. We'll just run down some for you uh, in playoff action tonight. West Jeff beats Grove City Christian 45-14. to It's Pickerington Central over New Albany 42-16. to St. Clairsville beat Marion Franklin 44-12. to Beaver Eastern beat Shadyside. Kind of a close one, 41 to 27. That's uh, that's a number two seed, uh, Eastern Pike County. Maslin beat Central Crossing, 41 to six. It was Hilliard Darby over Groveport Madison, 17 to 10. Harvest Prep beat New Lex, 55 to eight. West Muskingum over Union Local, 42 to 26. Sheridan over Morgan, 49 28. Pick North over Westerville Central, 28 to nothing. Jackson beat Marietta, 49 14. So Bloom Carroll will move to uh, move on to play Jackson uh, next week at Jackson. It was Hilliard Bradley over Newark, 42 to nothing. River, as we mentioned, beat Bishop Rosecrans, 49 21. Upper Arlington over Thomas Worthington, 46 to three. Wheelersburg over Afrocentric, 34 to nothing. It was London over Beechcroft, 57 14. A really close game. Bishop Reedy over Jonathan Alder, 14 to 10. Newcomerstown beat Grandview Heights, a close one as well, 17 14. Watterson all over uh, Columbus South, 45 to nothing. Granville and Bexley. Granville wins that one, 53-27. Canal Winchester wins a playoff game, 26-0 uh, over Walnut Ridge. Licking Valley over Columbus East, 40-6. It was Ironton over Worthy to Christian, 56-6. Gahanna beats Reynoldsburg, 51-20. And Big Walnut over Northland, 43-14. As... Uh, Looks like we may have Coach Pardon on his way over to talk to Marion. We'll get a couple more scores as we're waiting. Grove City beats Hilliard Davidson. How about that? The Greyhounds with a playoff win, 38 to 22. Westerville South beats Briggs, 49 to 30. Logan Elm goes down tonight. That's uh, unfortunate uh, for Logan Elm. They get beat by Indian Valley, 49-14 after a really exciting wow. win last week in Week 10 uh, over Hamilton Township to have a three-way tie for the Mid-State League Buckeye. Uh, but Coach uh, Holbert, man, you got to tip your cap to what he's done down at Logan. I'm just a fantastic person and great family. Absolutely. It was uh, Madison uh, going down to Zane Trace 24-14. Speaking of Hamilton Township, their season is over. They get beat by Miami Trace tonight 55-34. to Boy, they got to feel kind of bad. I mean, they had a great season, but, yeah. you know, you ended up on two L's, and that that's hard. Yep. Nelsonville, York beats Bel Air 20-12. to It was... Portsmouth West, or rather Heath over Portsmouth West, 27 to 15. Hoover beats St. Francis de Sales tonight, 23 to 21. Fort Fry over uh, Tuscaroras Valley, 35 to 21. Uh, Trimble, boy, they come back in the second half on fire. They beat Elgin, 37 to six. And as we uh, wrap up those scores, we're going to Head down uh, in just a few moments to Marion. You see them walking over with uh, Coach Pardon as the FCA Knights are going to be moving on to take on the River Pilots. FCA tonight wins it 61-54 to over Scioteville East. And we'll head down to the sideline to Marion Royster with Coach Pardon. Yeah, so here with Coach Pardon. Coach, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, that, was <laughs> that was something else, you know. But I, I guess I'll start here. One, one word, resilient. You guys seem to be incredibly resilient tonight. Had your ups and downs. You had your way ups, and then they got back into it. How, what was it that kept you guys so resilient despite all the ups and downs in this game? Our culture and our mentality. We talk about work uh, 
and two cent, giving everything you have. And those guys did that. They were resilient. They had fortitude. And, you know, we've played in games like this. So we played in a game like this against Rosecrans in the league where we had to keep scoring. And uh, actually, we got the same score that we had last time. So, you know, I'm proud of these young men. Rightfully so. Speaking of being proud, you, you know, you've got to be proud of Rusty Hutchinson. I mean, to start, I mean, he – was kind of like the second coming of Jerry Rice in that first half. I mean, he was just all over the field. You know, I, I think like five touchdowns in the first half. You know, just really just in, incredible athleticism and, and able to track down balls, his, his ball skills. Just what, what were some of the things you saw in the first half that was able to allow him to get off like that? Well, I just, you know, that's a tough team over there. They're a lot bigger than us, as most teams are. And, they, you know, they're pretty physical. But I thought we were a little more explosive. Uh, Rusty Hutchinson is one of the most explosive kids around. Gabe Welsh. Heck of a ball, you know, heck of a, a thrower, especially down the field. Our offensive line did great. You know, TJ uh, Blair, he started to get open a little bit, and his brother Danny was running well. Um, so that's what we, we just want to try to hit him on the edge and hit him down the field, and I think we did that, you know, decently well tonight. We knew we couldn't run down the middle on him. Yeah, well, in the second half, it looked like, you know, Danny, you know, did an outstanding job of really salting that game away. Kind of went to him on those direct snaps on that last drive, and he was able to get the perimeter on a lot of those. Just talk about the confidence you have in him at the end of the game, situations like that. Well, it, everything that happened tonight has happened all year. Uh, Rusty being explosive, and then against GCC down the stretch, 14-14 uh, game, um, and we put, put Danny back there in direct snap, and that's what we had to go back to tonight. These kids are battle-tested. Um, and I'm just proud of him, man. I'm, I'm happy and I'm proud and I'm blessed to be the coach of this team. Defensively, it seemed like you had an opportunity really to, to um, take the ball away. You had a lot of turnovers. Was that something that you saw when you were coaching to tackle the ball and create some strips there? Yeah, I mean, when, when teams like that, they're tough and you know they're going to keep fighting for every yard. So while they're held up, ripping and, and strip for that football, um, and I mean, we're small, so we have to be just gnats. We have to be annoying, and those guys were very annoying today, um, and, and they were resilient. So, I, you know, again, I'm proud. I can't say that enough. Well, Coach, you got a special group, you know, this year, and, you know, you're able to do some great things last year, but next round is the, is the round that, that you ended your season last year. So coming into that round this season, you know, again, you've got a great group. What, what's your thoughts going in for the rest of the season to try to go further than you did last year? we got to continue to do what we do. Um, Tonight we knew we were going to have to throw to set up the run. Um, we may have to do a little bit more of that next week. We're going to see the same type of team. They're a very, very good team, a solid team, fundamentally sound, big up front. So we're going to have to we're going to have to do what we do and put it in the air again. Well, great job tonight, Coach. Congratulations to you. I know it probably had you on the edge of your seat, but uh, you got to win nonetheless. Congrats, Coach. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks, Mariana. Thanks to Coach Part. And boy, a fantastic game tonight. 61 to 54 is the final. FCA moves on to host next week River. The River Pilots will be coming to town. That's going to be another good one. Uh, and we don't know where we'll be. Uh, we're we'll, we'll going to check out uh, all the games and where uh, we might be next week. But we will have a playoff game for you, either Bloom Carroll or FCA. And uh, we'll let you know. But uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. It's been a fantastic game. And Shu, final thoughts. Just, just amazing. Like I said, offensively, we've never had a game like that yeah. where the offense was so dominant on both sides, on both teams. Um, you know what? Every time we think we've seen it all or done it all, we see something yeah. else. You yeah. know? That's the fun of this. One more big thank you tonight to the folks here at Burn Union, especially uh, Danny Snively and, uh, of course, the crew in the uh, concession stand and uh, just had a fantastic crew working tonight while his team was uh, playing away. But uh, b very hospitable, as they always are, and Danny's got it going on down here. If you get a chance, stop down to Sugar Grove and check out the new facilities here, uh, and they're going to have more new facilities uh, in the very near future. So uh, thanks to Danny Snively and the folks here at Burn Union. Also want to say thanks to our Interface Video Productions crew tonight, Bob Competti, Shane Messina, Donnie Ziegfeld, Josh Messerly and Tom Russo. Once again, your final score, FCA moving on. They beat Sayotteville East 61-54. to For Marion Royster and Tim Shoemaker, I'm Jared Stewart. Have yourselves a great night, everybody. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., 
the Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, the Frankie e. Smith Funeral Home, Dagger Law, The Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. This has been an IVP Sports Production.